beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed business we we are tired of poor and broke churches poor and broke christians poor and broke people hallelujah we are tired of unbelievers controlling the wealth and the finances and allowing a few people to just scrounge for resources it's not of god it's devilish more sinners will go to hell as a result of poverty than lack of preachers hallelujah second mountain sorry politics and governance someone can sit down and legislate that land should not be sold for church building again is that true no matter how anointed you are you will suffer from that legislation recently the gay movement was tested a bit in our senate i thank god because there is a level of decorum we have hallelujah our national assembly has not derailed from the value of the kingdom that much and so they just kicked it out at once there are countries today that they have passed certain bills into law and they did not call any preacher or pastoral association for their consultation so two people can decide to get married listen carefully a man and a man and they can choose the church they want to join them and as a pastor, if you don't join them, they will withdraw your license. Sue you, lock up your church, pack up everything. Hallelujah. This is very disastrous. So we need men who have the fear of God. Men who understand the values of the kingdom to invade our government. Hallelujah. The Ten Commandments is not kicked out by herbalists. It's kicked out by parliament people. People who sit down and legislate on behalf of the kingdom. We can keep praying in tongues and throwing ourselves up and down. But so long as there are people who are legislating things that are not consistent with the will of God. It's terrible. In China, you cannot have more than a child now. One is okay. Praise God. It's terrible. They carry out free abortions before they pay women's salary. If by any reason, whether knowingly or unknowingly, your husband gets you pregnant, you are in for it. What did I say? Whether knowingly or knowingly. That is none of their business. You have one child, that's enough. Because they are trying to control whatever they want to control. It's terrible. So we need people there. Number three. Family life. How many of you agree with me that family life is in a mess right now? It needs a reordering. Hallelujah. The boundaries that have been kept have been taken away. We do not even know where the boundaries are again. And this is why this series is important. But let's just review the other mountains. You can get all of this in our teachings on the kingdom. The fourth mountain. Education. Very important. For as long as we keep teaching people 
You know, I told you one of our dreams is by the time God gives us an opportunity, we are going to build a school, a world-class school. I've shared it with the leaders. We will build a school and there are three courses we are going to add to the curriculum. One is called Spiritual Growth, Financial Education and Koinonia. These are three courses that our students must offer. Hallelujah. For you to write YEG, they say you must pass mass and English. For us, you must pass mass, English, financial education, and spiritual growth. Yeah. We keep raising intellectuals who have no fear and no knowledge of God. And their knowledge makes them fools. The Bible says there were two trees in the garden. One, the tree of life. The other, the tree that brings the knowledge of both good and evil. Hallelujah. The fifth mountain. Arts and entertainment. Very important. Hallelujah. Some of you are gifted and skilled fashion designers, beauticians, and so on and so forth. We need people to carry the value system. We don't want the world teaching us how to dress. Coming with every kind of junk and everything. We don't want the world controlling us. Let the best footballers be tongue-talking Christians. Let the best golfers be tongue-talking Christians. Who can say no to every Jezebel that wants to come and throw down their destiny. Hallelujah. We need to take the value system of the kingdom. Mountain number six. The media. I look forward to times when we will not just own. See, I truly believe that during our time, owning a television station will be like owning a handset. Hallelujah. We are talking about satellites. We are not talking about television stations. Hallelujah. Owning set lights and we pay for the bill for decades ahead of time. We can do anything we want to do. Nobody comes to tell us what to put on air or what to take out of air, how to culture and edit our words. When you're listening to Christian programs and someone says a vulgar word, they have ways of canceling it. There are other programs that when you are mentioning the things of God, they cancel it the same way. That is nonsense can't stand begging the government for permission and airtime and they give us five minutes and ten minutes if we want to worship for the whole day let's have it thank god for the ministries that have television stations it's a breath of fresh air in this wild jungle of babylon where everything can just be posted online hallelujah then the last mountain is the mountain of religion religion has caused more harm to the body it's all kinds of things. We need men who will rise up. This is where you talk about the fivefold authentic Christianity. And I'm glad to announce to you that Nigeria will present the true portrait of apostolic Christianity to the world. Yeah, this is true. Hallelujah. The mantle left UK in the days of Smith Wigglesworth and went down to America and they merchandised it by their intercourse with Babylon. And it left to Asia. And now it's returned to Africa. We will show the world the true portrait of what true apostolic Christianity is. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So today we are going to consider one of the mountains, family life. Pastor Jake started it. How many of you were blessed? Celebrate him. May God cause men to celebrate you just the way you did. selfish people <laughs> hallelujah don't worry i'm just joking you're not selfish people you're spirit-filled champions and generals on your way to tear down the walls of evil hallelujah so now please understand this we are going to be very comprehensive in this series we're not just talking about for many people when they just talk about um relationship the circumference of our dealing is just a guy, a lady, how they should get into a relationship and they stop there. Uh -uh. The journey starts from knowing yourself down till fatherhood, raising children. And that's why it's called family life. It's not called relationship series. Right? Family life. So it's a journey. Praise the Lord. I want you to listen because the Lord told me he will answer a lot of questions tonight. And I know a few people, I hope they are here. I told them to be here. 
who sent me a lot of questions you know about several confusions that they've had along this area and i told them look just come for the program god bless you pastor jake started by talking about a godly relationship and we want to bring believers into an understanding of the biblical principles that govern godly relationships and family life everybody say after me i'm a christian, I'm a christian. that means i'm a child of god that means I'm not of the world. That means I have the value system of the kingdom. Yeah, that's true. You have the value system of the kingdom. You are not of the world. You cannot afford to do things the way people are just doing it. And it's very sad. Please look up. It's very sad. Over 90% of us in this place have learned everything we learned about relationship and family life either from media or our friends or our bitter experiences. Hallelujah. There are few ministries that pay the price to talk about family life and the principles of godly relationships. And you see, what you don't teach people, when you don't teach people certain principles, they learn just anything that comes. Is that correct? There are pastors that castigate and condemn people and get angry at their members. Because they don't seem to be excelling in this area. But then they will not teach the truth. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. When, when Adam said, the Lord, the Bible says in, in Genesis 3. It says, and he heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where art thou? Adam said, I heard your voice, but I hid. Why? Because I was naked. And God said, who told you? In other words, that's an information you got from somewhere. So everything you have today that constitutes your mindset was told you by somebody. The Bible says, Paul speaking, he says, There are, as it were, many voices in the earth. And none of them are without effect. So we're going to be considering a lot of things. This is a very life-transforming series. And I want you to pay your rapt attention. Hallelujah. There are many people who were taught nothing about love nothing about relationship nothing about sex nothing about marriage nothing about the dignity of keeping yourself they just our parents just hoped that we will find the truth hallelujah that has resulted to bitter casualty in the lives of many people but tonight the lord brings light in the name of jesus very important And the church that is supposed to be an apostolic molding place, the potter's house, where men are built and fashioned, they've either shied away from it and are not ready to take responsibility in that area and teach and train the people. Because we have this demonic teaching that these kinds of teaching should not be taught in church. We have this religious spirit. Is that true? There are churches that would dare not talk about things like this. They feel all that there is in the life of someone is just teach people how to be built spiritually, how to pray in tongues, how to love God. But those people who enter a relationship, is that true? While they are praying, the guy sees the lady and likes her. Now he doesn't know how to manage what is happening to him. Or the guy wants to get married and all he has been taught to do is pray in tongues and see visions in the realm of the spirit. And fall under the anointing. And he does not know how to help himself. There are many anointed children in the body of Christ. We are only sophisticated when it comes to spiritual things. But when it comes to the wisdom of living in our social environment. Many Christians are dull of understanding. Is that true? Many Christians live like fools in their social environment. Because we lack the wisdom. So you see an unbeliever who does not know God, doesn't respect the ways of God, but has a lot of wisdom when it comes to living in life. Wisdom for life. Many church folks lack this. Hallelujah. That's why you can see, for instance, unbelieving ladies. You never see a guy who just gets up like that and comes to them. But every time you want to see nonsense that happens is Christian girls. Any man that feels is emotionally troubled and he just wants to sleep around with any lady, they know how to find Christian girls. 
Hallelujah. And that's not because the Christian girls are bad. That's because we the preachers who should build and help them and teach them the truth are being irresponsible. All of us. Let me tell you something. Never pray for a crowd or for membership if you cannot teach and train the people. Are you listening to me? You have no business having people in your congregation if you are not ready to build them. Praise the Lord. And by the grace of God, it's our goal to build people holistically. So sometimes you see us teach on character and it looks as if that is all there is in God. Then we teach about the principles of the spirit and the anointing. We teach on finance. We teach on purpose, the kingdom, destiny. It's important to touch on every aspect so that we will have believers that are built and fashioned. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Right, so um, Pastor Jake started with the basics of relationship. Please, let's run through it. I have a lot to cover tonight and I trust God for grace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The first thing Pastor Jake started telling us, and everybody I want you to look up, inside and outside. Listen to me, lift your hands everybody. Say, I receive the spirit of meekness. Say one more time, I receive the spirit of meekness. I humble myself to hear, to understand, to receive, and to learn. Pride is a, is a killer. There are many people who because of pride and arrogance would not listen. Many people will believe they know what they are doing. Just listen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The first thing we need to define is the concept of love. Pastor Jake said that very extensively. I will run through it. One of the biggest challenges, please let me have one guy and one lady here quickly. One here, one here. Anybody? Taiwo, quickly, please appreciate them. Hallelujah. Now, listen, I want you to know that a man is not another woman. Every lady say that a man is not another woman. Ladies say a woman is not another man. Very important. The concept of love from the perspective of a man is far different from love. what love is for a woman. Are you following me now? The Bible says that when God brought man into being, all that was man's focus was purpose, destiny. Are you following me now? And honor and authority. Man was conscious of his place, the honor, the authority, and everything God has given him. And so very quickly, I want to go very straight to the point. Every time you talk of love from a man's perspective, it means two things. Number one, honor. Number two, respect. Everybody say, love for a man means, number one. Number two. No matter how you claim or think you are loving a man, if that concept of love does not translate to genuine honor or respect, you have not loved the man by his definition. Are you following me now? Very important. Ladies, understand this. When it comes to dealing with a man, men can kill because of respect. Are you listening to me? Men can kill. You call somebody Mr. when you should call him chief. He can sue you. He can make sure you die for that statement. Is that true? Men can kill. You call somebody a pastor who you should call a reverend or a reverend who you should call a bishop or a brother who you should call an apostle or prophet or whatever. He can kill you for it. Sister, your beauty can fade at once like a leaf if you disrespect a brother. Are you listening to me? Oh, it's, it's not about ego. Ladies think it's ego. It's, it's our configuration by design. You will never get the best of a man if you do not understand what love means from the perspective of the man. So what does love mean, sisters? Honor and respect. What does it mean to honor? To hold in high esteem. To hold in high esteem. As we explore this, you will know the reason why some relationships will never work and some homes will never come together. It doesn't matter what kind of message is preached. It's not just about Satan and demons. Let's get the fundamental thing straight. 
So love means respect and honor. When you respect the guy, you respect his assignment, you respect his call, you respect his purpose. That's the circumference of what love means for a guy. Very important. It was on account, listen to me ladies, never forget this. Never forget this. Your primary ministry or a fixed ministry that God has put for every lady is to be a help meet for the man. So it doesn't matter what crusades you have to do in the future. It was the first mention of a woman was to be able to help the man in his assignment. Is that true? The Bible says, and God said, it is not good for the man I have created and given an assignment to be alone. It is not good. He said, and I will make a help meet, a help suitable. Ladies say, I'm a help suitable. Say it with confidence. I'm a help suitable. Because there are some of you that have gone through things in life that have abused this statement. You feel that you are not a help to somebody. We'll talk about that. You are a help suitable. And the Bible says, her desire shall be to her husband. Her desire shall be to her husband. So when you love the man, you respect him, you honor him. Sarah called Abraham Lord. It's not a sign of worship. The word Lord means there I esteem you. There is a beautiful position that God has given a man and a woman. And ladies hear me, this is very important. Because there is a satanic movement trying to awaken women in quote to their rightful place. And while that has worked well, it has crossed the boundary. Are you following me now? Where ladies believe that they can be a man. Ladies believe they can be everything. There are all kinds of foundations rising up, orchestrated by demons that are bringing ladies into rebellion against their husbands and in the home. And they think, let me tell you something, your respect for the man, especially when you get married, is not just a function of his ability to provide a loan. While that is true, if your respect for the man is tied just because of his ability to provide, you are violating scripture. Because agape is love without conditions. It is a position that God has put you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? We have to rush. Now we come to the world of the ladies. Guys, listen very carefully. Love does not mean purpose for the lady. Get it very clearly visionless brothers destiny shaking men of god i announce to you that love for the lady has nothing to do with your destiny carry your destiny and your crusades and your one million salvation target and pack it away when you are talking about love from the sister's perspective sisters if i'm talking can you say amen because some of you have been trying to tell the guy you are so happy that he's seated near you know you say oh god let him say it God has answered your prayer already. Hallelujah. You see, because of the fragile nature, the fragile nature of the lady and her emotional configuration, did you know that the emotional configuration of a lady was designed on purpose? Are you following me now? There are some of you ladies, you are trying to make yourselves become men. Stop it! Two men cannot live in the same home. Hallelujah. God designed this side of you to be able to complement the man. Some ladies are as hard as a rock. As hard as a rock. It's not a gift to your husband. No, it's not a gift. No man that I know would cherish that. I'm not talking of, I mean, being strong and stable. I'm talking of being hard, insensitive, emotionless. You are a man. You are not a woman. A woman was not designed that way. A woman was designed to respond. A man was designed to absorb. A woman will respond. Are you learning something? Those outside, if you are following me, say amen. Hallelujah. 
So, love for a lady means, number one, it means attention. All guys say attention. attention. Say it, attention. attention. In fact, let me say it the way I say it all the time. Maximum care and attention. Write it. Those who are guilty are laughing. Maximum what? It's like a graph. You know that song? Nothing, no place. You must gauge that tip. Ladies will stretch you until they see the highest of the attention. Listen, let me tell you something, guys. Attention for a lady is almost like purpose for you. When you do not give a lady attention. And now we are going to define what we mean. Because this word is falling on different soils. We need to redefine it. Hallelujah. It means care. Everybody say care. care. You must be caring. To be caring means to be sensitive to needs. To be concerned. It means time. Everybody say time. Very important. Time. It means affection. Affection. This is an emotional bonding. Not sex. Emotional bonding. For God's sake. Emotional bonding. If you want to be a priest, go to the seminary. If you want to get into a relationship, open your heart and allow that emotional dimension to find expression in every relationship. Praise the Lord. So, for the guy, what's the difference? Now, that does not mean, listen, please understand this. That does not mean these other qualities I mentioned in the lady are not appreciated in the life of the man. Are you following me now? But according to the order of priority. So, if... If you are going out with Taiwo now and you meet and you say, Taiwo, do you know what the Lord is doing in our midst? How was that meeting? And Taiwo is looking at you. She's smiling because she's trying to respect you. But I assure you, she's not hearing what you are saying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Guaranteed, she's not hearing what you are saying. You ate her food, licked the plate. You didn't even say whether the food is nice or not. This lady took out time, bought these hills. How many of you have seen these hills? Brothers, don't tell lies. If you appreciate it, clap for her, Jerry. And you just come with your anointing that has blinded your eyes. And all you see is souls, even on your wife who is already saved. Ladies, tell the brothers, change. Shout it again, change. Ah, you are in for a shock this night. We've not started, though. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, look up, please. We have a lot to cover. Respect and honor. There are many of you ladies, you are so rude, hostile, you wonder why no guy comes around you. Because they see themselves every time they see you. disrespectful you are rude cruel you don't talk to anybody with respect that's how i am no brother wants to mortgage his prophetic destiny for that kind of wife is that true brothers let me tell you something don't you think prayers is covering the eyes of the brothers they are watching oh yes they are watching the bible says be wise like serpents. The brothers are watching. They are watching you as you are doing this, this manly thing you are doing. No respect. You are just shouting at the guy. And somebody that has been trusting God just says, Lord, thank you for answering my prayers. I've, I've received from you. Every man is looking for a woman who will compliment him. Ladies, I want to give you a big shocker right now. There's no man that I know who is looking for a preacher. Everybody is looking for a woman who can be a wife to him. He's already a preacher. He doesn't need another one. 
ladies have this funny thing that they, you feel the more you are entering the anointing, the more attractive you are becoming for the guy. It's such a big mistake. The guy is looking at his children. He already knows he's busy. You are busy just like him. The guy is looking at who can help, who can cook at home. You're already going for five crusades in a week. He will marry you. He doesn't want to die for nothing. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? That's why we have a welfare department to help us. We can fast happily. Why? There is a consolation. Imagine if all we have is prayer ban. We're in trouble as the ministers. Hallelujah. Please appreciate both of them. God bless you. So we have to get it clear. Love is very, very important. When the concept of love is not defined from the kingdom perspective, there is going to be chaos and anarchy. Hallelujah. Have you seen a lady look at a guy? Guys, when the lady comes to you and says you are selfish. Ah, me, selfish. I'm providing money. I'm paying the children's school fees. Hallelujah. And the lady is saying you are selfish. And you are now wondering, is it that I'm not purpose driven? Am I not praying enough? What she's saying is, you are not defining love from my perspective. Are you following me now? Very important. Now before we start, Pastor Jake spoke about it here, but let me define certain things. The qualities that a guy must have before you think of entering a relationship and a lady. We have to talk about that quickly. There are qualities. Listen. Please look up. If these qualities are not in you and you have been dreaming of asking a lady out in this place, you better wake up from that dream. Wake up in Jesus' name. The Bible says, Arise, thou that sleepest, and let Christ give you light. So wake up tonight and listen. There are many brothers that think because you are macho and broad-chested and tall, dark and handsome, it just means that every lady is standing desperate like a leaf. Better repent of your pride and listen to these qualities that we have to explain. Is anybody following me tonight? I already told you to laugh from the beginning. Look up, please. The Bible says for us to have no business with the unfruitful work of darkness. Before you even consider a relationship or marriage with anybody, let me tell you something. That person must be genuinely born again. Write it. This is not part of the quality. This is what even qualifies you to begin to look at other qualities. Must be born again. We live in a generation where ladies are becoming the Holy Spirit who have the exclusive ability to change any Romeo they like. Let me tell you something. Come out of what you watched in that Nigerian film. Don't get up and go and yoke. See, look up. Every lady, every true godly lady must submit herself to the man. The only choice you have is to choose the kind of head you submit to. Hallelujah. Don't choose any kind of head that will come and kill you. He must be born again. What does it mean to be born again? To submit to the governing authority of Christ. The governing authority of the word. A man that does not submit to the word of God can kill you. There is nothing to give him boundaries. There is nothing to define the terms of his relationship or marriage with you. There is nothing to convict him. You can't afford to go out with a man who is not born again. There are many of us, it's those that are not born again that you like. You say they are nicer than the brothers. But they will take you to hell. And you won't see any of the brothers in hell. We are all going to heaven. Hallelujah. 
Say he must be born again. Guys, say she must be born again. Every lady that threw every great man in the Bible and in history were nice and beautiful ladies. Most of them did not have respect for the things of God. Hallelujah. If you marry a lady that is not born again and is not serious with God. Some of you say, uh-uh, but the guy is nice. Say that day Pastor Jakes even saw him. Didn't he greet you, sir? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Listen, I'm answering a lot of questions here. Do not confuse morality with the presence of the Holy Spirit in a man. Are you listening to me? Willpower can only take you so far. You do not know the power of, I mean, Satan and demons outside of the word of God. When you know that, you will know that morality is not enough. See, let me tell you something. You can get a course you don't like for five years. You can struggle it, wrestle it, complain about it and just finish. But when you get married, after 40 years, that man will change and wreck your life. And you will wish you were dead. Some of you, that's the case in your families. Now you have an opportunity to choose. Hallelujah. So are you ready now? Now there are certain qualities that a Christian brother should have. We're, we're not talking about marriage yet. We're talking about relationships now. So every brother, every Christian brother or Christian sister that desires a godly relationship, we expect you to be building yourselves or to have built yourselves in this area. Hallelujah. Now ladies look up. I know that if I'm to call two or three ladies now, we don't have the time and ask you, what kind of man do you want? You first smile and say, hey. Hallelujah. You just carry your handbag. It's already written there because you've been praying about it. You bring out your hundred point agenda list. The guy must have the ability to carve his eyebrows. He must understand about nail filing and the rest. We don't want a brother with oil on his face as if they fried egg on the face. He must be posh and clean. Oh, you think we don't know? <laughs> Hallelujah. I like a brother that will do this, do that, do that. You want a brother that is exposed. Don't want anybody who will be disgracing you in the public. Praise God. You go to a restaurant before they see anything. They've not even prayed. They have started disgracing you. He thinks he's in his room. Now you are embarrassed. Ladies have a lot of things. But let me tell you tonight. Look up please. All those things will not work. Period. Did you hear me? All those things will what? Because even you, you are not prepared for that kind of man. The only man that fits all those qualities you are writing is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not looking for a wife. But he has made us his ambassadors. Are you listening to me? You cannot say, oh, this guy must be. There are ladies who are so meticulous. Say, if I look at his skin, he must be fresh and this. Let me not see any funny thing. He must be without blemish. No, the lamb that will be slain. Listen, it's not wrong. It's just childish. You wrote it when you were in secondary school. Now you came to the university. Tear it. You are growing. That's, that's just the remedy. What you need is not deliverance. It's just growth. The Bible says, when I was a child, you were writing that when you were trying to keep yourself busy to write SSE. This is almost 10 years now. Tear that thing. Grow up. Face a real world like a woman and a man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are certain virtues, Pastor Jakes called them, and I'll write it, cardinal virtues. That means there are some virtues that eventually they will develop themselves. Listen, ladies, look at me. 
If you are looking for a perfect man, you have no ministry in the life of that man. Are you listening to me? The purpose of the lady is to complete the man. To help his inadequacy. So if you are looking for a man who is already perfect, you don't have a ministry in the life of that man. Praise the Lord. Mm. Are you getting blessed? Alright ladies, what qualities should you look for in, in the guy? And guys, these are the qualities you should be building yourself in. Number one, honesty and sincerity. Quality number one. Any guy coming around your life who is not honest and sincere, pack your load and run. Don't pray about it. I'm already telling you the answer. Run. Honesty and sincerity. The brother must be honest. Must be sincere. You can't be at the back of Ribadu. That, you know that part. That dark part. You are just sitting there and they just call and say, Ah, maybe your wife or your girlfriend or whatever calls you and say, Ah, I've, I've arrived Lagos. Kai, I just got there right now. And she says, Are you serious? Well, how was the journey? She says, I'll call you later. I'm even too tired. She says, I understand. Immediately you drop. You just lie to the girl that is a distance call. It's your relative from UK that is calling you. No sincerity. Or you're calling one lady and the lady just comes and you pick up the call. You say, ah, you safe. As, as the money entered, does not enter. Hurry up now. Don't waste my time. I, I have a beautiful girl here to buy something for her. Why are you wasting my time? And you are lying. Sisters, are the brothers not like that? Brothers, don't feel bad. You know me. I will always balance the equation. <laughs> Hallelujah. A dishonest brother will produce a dishonest husband, a dishonest father, a dishonest leader, and will kill you. Are you listening to me? Deal ruthlessly with dishonesty. It's better for the brother to say, Mio, I'm trusting God. God has not helped me yet. This shoe you are seeing is my only one. This trouser is the only one. This shirt is the only one. But the spirit of faith is in me. You are seeing me pray in every koinonia. I'm sweating in your presence. You are seeing that we are flogging out this thing. The door will open one day. Is that correct? Many of you ladies, you like guys lying to you. You have itchy ears. You like it so. The guy just comes to you and he's laughing and he just says, Hi, how are you? And this is not how he speaks so. Just because you came. And the guy comes and he's bouncing and he likes you. And he says, uh, sweetheart, I was wondering. Um, he said, let me talk to this guy. I need to be at the airport tomorrow. What's your tomorrow like? I'm going to take the first flight tomorrow. I have to be back. There's something my, my dad sent a consignment. And can you imagine? This is boys. You know, they are taking my humility for granted. And the lady's melting. Hey. You know it's a lie. Your roommates are watching from their window. You know it's a lie. You like it so. You go back and you carry the lie and you are telling your roommates. You are, you are saying it as if you don't believe him. But you are saying it to increase your reputation. You are claiming that you don't like it. But you are telling everybody, shut up if you don't like it. Why are you telling everybody? Say, can you imagine? That guy came and met me and he was talking about one airport in me. He wants to play with me. Sister B, can you imagine? that guy? And you are claiming that you are not enjoying what he's saying. <laughs> Honesty. Number two. The guy must be teachable. Ladies say teachability. Any brother that is not teachable is going to drown you. You will follow him together and enter an ocean of trouble and he will drown you. And brothers, this is where we have to be very careful. Because you see, we guys are egotistic in nature. Are you following me now? It's very difficult. There are some brothers here. God must help you tonight. Your deliverance has started. From your culture, women don't talk to men. From your culture, women don't advise men. Is that true? Some of you are from royal families. And you are taking your village everywhere you go. Even inside your relationship.
So you're with the lady and she's trying to advise you and she's saying, um, sweetheart, have you considered this way? Say, look, let this be the last time. Even the Bible said, wives, submit. Submit means shut up. Don't try me, oh. You are entering the fire and the lady is saying, honey, look at this. We are entering fire. Say, which fire? Guys, fire is burning. I say, which fire? Where is the fire? And later you carry the girl and put together in the fire and it's burning two of you. Later you say, ah, it's true. This thing looks like fire. When it has burnt you and it's almost killing you. Brothers, be teachable. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of great strength. These ladies may look like they don't know anything, but I tell you something. If you are humble and you can listen, you will learn a lot of things. Any brother that is not teachable and arrogant and just believes you are the alpha and omega of that relationship, the lady should shut up. Even if she's speaking nonsense, one day she'll say something that is sensible. You must listen. Many husbands have entered into trouble Many husbands have done different things that, that one plot of land that somebody came to swindle you. Land of 10 million, you sold it for 2 million. Your wife was telling you, be careful, be careful. Say be careful for what all these women, they are too emotional. There are many of you, if you will be teachable. You know what teachability is? Teachability is your willingness to learn and your willingness to accept when you are wrong that's why we taught ourselves in our character building series on four words what's the first one can you remember everybody what's the first one please you must say please what's the second one i'm sorry apologize when you are wrong number three thank you you must tell people if they do good for you 20 times say thank you 20 times What's the last one? God bless you. You must bless people. So you must be teachable. Let's hurry up. Number three. Brothers, you must be visionary and responsible. There are many guys, you have not finished managing yourself. Don't add a woman into it. There are many guys, you, you have not led yourself. You don't have self-management. You are careless. You are indisciplined. Now you want to bring another lady and add her into your predicament. You must be visionary. When you hold a lady and say, we are going out, where are you going to? I always give this example. How many of you have climbed bike? And the bike man told you, you were asking him, do you know this place? Do you know CGC? Before he finished, he said, yes. Later, he starts going with you. He just passes somewhere. He said, oh God, this is not the road. He said, oh sorry, I forgot. Then he turns back. Later, he comes and just passes and is heading towards Rema. And you say, oh God, stop. Do you know where we are going? He say, I thought you knew the place. That's how many guys are. You just bring the bike and hit the seat and tell the lady, oh yeah, climb. The lady, I used to say, climb. Is it not me? Once they climb from gear one, you go to the last one. You are just speeding. The lady says, sorry, you, where are we going? He say, leave me. Are we not? Have we arrived there? Be patient. After 10 years, you have not defined where you are going. Never go out with any guy you don't know where he's taking you to. You better know where you are going, no? Don't lead yourself like a sheep to the slaughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very important. He must be responsible psychologically. A guy who is always crying like a baby does not need relationship. He needs help and growth. Somebody just say, Kai, your hair is looking bushy. He's crying. It's the lady that says, come. <laughs> he says, see, things happen like that. The guy says, why is everybody doing to me? You are embarrassing the lady. They'll say, Abba, sister, is it that there was no guy? Which baby did you go and carry like this? You enter a program, there's a seat here. They say, sorry, stand up for somebody else. The guy is already crying. The lady now stands up to hold him and say, don't cry. You are not ready for a relationship, my brother. Please, please, please focus on your finances or something else, your spiritual life. Because let me tell you something. There are pressures you are going to absorb in your life. Hallelujah. As a leader, you don't let people see your tears anyhow. It will kill their spirits. Hallelujah. 
Every lady needs a man that she can be secured around. A man that can protect her. I was told of a story that armed robbers came somewhere. Open this door now. Bow, bow, bow. The man just stabbed the wife and said, stand up. No, he, he was pretending like he was sleeping. She just said, honey, honey, as if he was sleeping. Honey, you must wake up. Oh. Are you hearing what is happening? He said, I'm hearing now. Why would you just keep quiet? The guy was sweating and shaking. True life story. The woman got up and started praying in tongues around her house. They were shouting, if you let us open this door by ourselves, this and that and that, do you know that eventually when the armed robbers left and the woman came, she found the man dead. Yeah. What killed him? So who is protecting who? There are many of you, you like women, but you are very fearful. You don't have courage. You are not emotionally balanced. Please don't think of getting into a relationship. That you'll be crying all the time. As if you are going to JS1. You know how people go to JS1 and they cry. At a point the lady is feeling. Oh God. Did you bring me to protect this? What did you bring me to do in his life? You are not a man. Hallelujah. So that, that's it for the guys. Cardinal virtues. Ladies. Brothers. If you love your destiny and where God is taking you, make sure you look at this. <laughs> Number one, the ladies must be submissive. Every lady says submission. Look up, please. Submission is not weakness. Submission is the ability to bring your strength under control. Are you following me now? What is submission? The ability to bring your strength under control. You see this from many of our mothers. The man can be shouting, saying something, and, and our mothers are not wrong, but they will just keep quiet. You will be wondering and say, if I were my mother, eh? How about we enter the same trouser? Say, my mother, my father is always doing with her. She's even doing like Musev. Eh? All this village with me. How about no man can try that? You better shut up. Oh. You better shut up. Because your mother was once a young CC like you and was bouncing like that. Ask her why she's calm now. Hallelujah. Many ladies have this funny. There are many things that we are doing that we don't know is childishness. This night you will see that it's just sheer childishness. Hallelujah. Submission. Very important. Bringing your strength under control. Number two. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm just summarizing what Pastor Jakes has already preached, so we have to run. Number two, teachability. Ladies, you must also be teachable. There are some ladies, Gamaliel, you always teach everybody. Gamaliel was the person who taught Paul. Some of you are Gamaliel. You sit in the midst of brothers. Do you know that? The brother comes to talk to you. Yeah, just like a Proverbs, this and that said, this and that, and you think you are impressing him. The guy just gets up. Tells his friend, Babe, I'm to me now. Let's just go somewhere. That's not it. It's not the way forward. This is nonsense. As you are talking, the lady is just saying, This is not a wife, this is a man. You are not teachable. There are some of you, no man can sit you down and talk to you. No man. You do something, so even if he's a pastor, you do something, Pastor Jack said, All right, two of you come to see me. He said, Me, see you. Nobody brought me into this world though. Even my father doesn't. You see that? So who do you want to come and marry you? Who do you want? Be fair. Who do you want to come and marry this kind of trouble? Hmm. Teachability. Number three. Sisters, you must be physically attractive. The brothers are not just spirits. They dwell in bodies. They have eyes. My friend Ejimi says, love is blind. Marriage will open your eyes. Sisters, look up. Brothers, look up too. My brother, you better don't deceive yourself. If you are going far, ah, huh? and you don't want to run it. Now, when I talk of beauty, beauty is a relative statement. But you must, don't carry a lady that you will not be proud of. Huh? 
You just see somebody says, my younger is just my younger sister. Or you just look and say, oh, there's one lady that is disturbing me. Oh, me, I'm tired. I don't know what to do. You kill the lady. If you behave to a lady like that, you don't deserve her. Get out of her life and let the person who deserves her come in. Are you following me? Very important. Don't find yourself. You must be proud of the lady. Ladies, be physically attractive. That does not mean be pornographic or nude. You are a Christian. It means be nice. You are young. Don't celebrate your 50th birthday when you are 22. Be patient. The time will come. And all the brothers say, Amen. Amen. It doesn't mean you must have all the money. Look, we are watching. Brothers are happy. When they see a nice sister, you are, you are, you are taking care of yourself. How much is powder? The type we use, how much is it? The type you use is 10,000. That's too expensive. Get the normal. Who will know? Who will know? It's only among yourself, ladies, that you know. Will we know? See, a lady just comes, there's, there's fats on your face, oily face, you are just moving, walking anyhow. You are just walking any. You can't even compose yourself. They are sharing food. Join the line, you want to collect, you are doing... All these kind of attitudes. The brothers are watching. You need to tell yourself, myself, behave. Behave. The Bible says you are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Behave. Hallelujah. You must be physically attractive. If you have one shirt, iron it. Don't carry a shirt that is twice your size. Yes, your mother gave it to you. Adero, tell us. Reduce it. Abba. Must everybody know it was a gift? You just carry needle and fold it and fold it and clip it. Can they reduce it? The brothers are not idiots. Why we are praying in tongues? Shut <laughs> Yeah. Please, brothers, look for what looks like your future. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I come to the brothers now? Oh, I must come. You know me. Hallelujah. You see, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, don't criticize anybody until you have done twice what the person has done once. Hallelujah. Brothers, if you want that kind of glamorous lady, you must start working on yourself as up. Are you following me now? There are many brothers, you are bushy, you don't comb your hair, the dust is dry season, but you still see at the back of your shoe mud of rainy season. You are no, I will talk. You must be physically attractive. You wear one one singlet for two months. It's easy to wear something on top. Who know? You can't buy perfume of five hundred naira. You just come. You are sweating. They say, "Hug your neighbor." Before they do anything, you want to hug. How much is sure? At least that's the basic one. Listen, you are a leader. You don't bob your hair. This side is more than this side. It's not like maybe it's a style. It's just disorganization of your hair. Because for a long time, you can't even go to the barbing salon and say, just have it, let it be nice. You finish bathing, even oil. You just, you are trying to comb it. You don't know whether it's back or front. You throw the comb away and get up. Just come for koinonia. And you just come and you are smiling. You think it's everybody that is smiling with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your, your clothes are always rumpled. Always. Always. Always rumpled. Hmm? 
go and wear one kind of thing and carry one, one kind of tie. You will stop here. You will now wear it and you are coming and you are just eyeing the sister. She's not looking at you. I assure you. I assure you. I assure you she's not looking at you. Hallelujah. Help us, Holy Spirit. We have to run. You must be physically attractive. Both parties. Be smart. We are not saying go and borrow everybody's clothes to come for koinonia with. Uh -uh. If you have been doing it, stop. It's not necessary. God has blessed you. God has blessed you. Hallelujah. You are borrowing your roommate's shoe every week. The day your roommate says it's coming for miracle service too. On that day, you wear your palms and sit outside. Even if you spams you have, wear it honorably. Polish it. Can I tell you something, brothers? I discovered something with ladies. They are not as materialistic as we think. I tell you, there are some ladies that love God and they are willing to start and go with you only if you will be honest. Sisters, is that true? It's not all of you that should say yes because some of you are very materialistic. I'm coming to you. So this was a summary of what Jake shared. Hallelujah. Very important. So how many of us have been blessed by those qualities? How many of us know that there are some of them we need to walk in ourselves? Don't lie now. Lift your hands. Don't pretend. I appreciate your honesty. This is why we are here. And God is helping us. Do you know why you need to walk on these qualities? It doesn't mean you have to be perfect. But make sure there are honest efforts. Are you following me now? So that you can be a blessing to one another. Everybody say, I'm not a curse. I'm a blessing. Say one more time, I'm not a curse. I'm a blessing. Hallelujah. Alright, so we're going to talk quickly about entering into a relationship now. The process. The process of entering into a relationship. Again, let me have one lady and one guy. Please, can we have them quickly? Quickly, we have to. One lady, Taiwo, please come again. Aaron, God bless you. One lady and one guy. Hallelujah. Please look up. There is no crime. Everybody look up, please. There is no crime, brother, in seeing a sister that you love and you find yourself affectionate about. It does not make you unspiritual. MOG, hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? There is no crime. <laughs> there is no crime. Hallelujah. When you find out as a brother, a good Christian brother, hearing the word in a, in a, in a meeting like, look at Koinonia, inside, people are inside, outside. Now you, are, you have been seeing this sister, she's in the choir. Her name is Taiwo. Hallelujah. Always ministering. Something is moving. Something is changing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please listen. I have to rush. We have to be out of here. Now, listen, brothers. When you want to end, let me look at look at me. Do you know why this thing keeps backfiring for some brothers? Let me tell you one of the reasons. The Bible says the labor of the fool will weary him. Not because there is no road. He doesn't know the road to the city. The reason why many of you, it's not necessary because you are not nice. You don't know how to do this thing. You will not seek advice. You will not seek counsel. You just see a lady like this after Koinonia. Worship team. They are holding their hands to pray. You can't even wait. Let them finish the prayer. You've got to stand close. You are just moving around. You can't wait. They say, hug 20 people. You didn't hug anybody. You are just gallivanting around the worship team square here. As soon as they finish, just say, sister, please, can I talk to you? Now, the lady said, well, for the benefit of doubt, we just finished fellowship. Say, I've been watching you. I have a policeman. You have been watching her. What else? I've been watching you. And uh, the other day, I was, I was talking with my friend just says please, please, I know where you are going please, I beg you, just save yourself any stress, it won't work 
You just get up and go to your room. Say this coin only a lady serve now. Oh. Let me just kukuma be sitting outside. You look, you you will pray. These are people that are seeing us pray. They know I'm a man of God, yet you won't say yes. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Everybody say friendship. friendship. Say it, friendship. friendship. This is the first step to entering a relationship. You can't come and meet a perfect stranger because of your unbelieving roommate did it. He just saw one, one, one lady who just came in 100 level in her innocence. Her mother told her, when you go here, don't do Now the guy just came to threaten her. And the lady, out of fear, she just said, oh yeah, yes. Because she doesn't know what to have. You too, you were inspired by that testimony. You now got up and met a Christian sister who has been hearing the word. You just come and meet her. Say, I want to marry you. Pray about it. What is wrong with you? Eh, your father did it. So what? Change. See, listen. If your wife is your best friend, that naturally tells you that the probability of finding her among your friends is very high. Correct? The best friend is the best among friends. Is that true? Some of you, you don't have friends. This is what makes the sister know that you are ready to enter a relationship. You don't work with anybody. You don't greet anybody. In Suddenly, ah, after miracle service, you have said Romy around worship team. You, you don't greet anybody. You are not in any group. After prayer, band finishes praying, you just turn. You are, on your, you are always alone. You are talking alone as if you are out of your mind. When the sister starts seeing you, she's even afraid. She doesn't know whether you are fine or not. Something wrong with this brother? Does he need counseling? You must be friendly. Are you listening to me? Listen. Guys, let me give you a big secret. If you can make a lady laugh genuinely and sincerely, you have taken some good steps into that journey. I give you a tip that will work for you. Hallelujah. Don't carry your boring boring life your roommates should test run whether you are sociable or not they are always running away from you ah flog it in your room first before you go and disgrace yourself to one lady you are in love you are pretending like you are not in love you are just boning your face and coming to the girl you say can i see you? the girl say i'm busy come now yourself Be friends. One of the best ways of being friends is join a department. Join a department. One of the benefits of a department is that it will help your social life. Is that true? The worship team are so, so, if you see them, you'll be amazed. They love one another. Some of them were not like that when they started. Is that true? The ushers, ushers, are you there? They love themselves. Who do you love? Who loves you? You don't know. When you enter, when see service in the house of God is a big helper to take you out of inferiority and complex. They'll tell you lead prayer. Now you lead prayer, and when you lead prayer, ah, after the prayer meeting, Tyro says, "Wow, that was nice." Oh, pure sisterly love, no strings attached. You too, you are happy. You didn't know how to do it. Now you can watch Aaron do it. You are you are learning. Who will know that you don't know? Tomorrow now you come, they say, oh, one another. You are making progress. Are you making progress? It's not like you are, you join the department with the intention to marry the lady. But you are becoming sociable. It's giving them an opportunity to see your sincere heart. Is that true? One day the lady comes late, you stand up for her. Ah, ah. She says, wow, that was so kind. You are learning. You are reducing your journey you don't know. Some of you come from nowhere. You see people who have been functioning, they are taking their time. You think you have the spirit of, you just run from nowhere. They don't know you, you have no history. You just came for koinonia twice. You think you want a wife, you just come and carry anybody. We won't give you our ladies like that. Come and sit down. Share the word of God. We want to be sure of the kinds of things our ladies, uh, you, they can't be praying in tongues. You come with your Babylon from wherever because you did talking for two weeks. You think it's enough to carry them. No, sir. 
they are not that cheap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Entering into a relationship. Take time to build friendship. See, not friendship for the purpose of relationship. Be a free person. Be happy with people. Are you listening to me? And ladies, there are some of you, you are not helping yourself. Make sure when brothers smile and greet you, you just say he likes me. Habba! You are in a church. What kind of insecurity is that? A brother smiles at you. He just hugs you. You go back and say, I've been watching. It's a lie. It's a lie. Please, this guy is pressing into God. It's a lie. Don't blackmail him. He loves God. You just see a brother like you. And the next thing, you start becoming edgy and funny. Everybody say friendship. So, Aaron begins to be friends. Maybe from department or something. It may be in the same department. It may be in the different department. You know, you are just serving in the house of God genuinely. It gives room for the sincerity of your heart to be tested. Are you listening to me? You are consistent in the body of Christ. At least the lady sees you. You are a face that they know around. She knows what you are hearing. You know what she's hearing. Is, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Never go out with a guy who you don't know who is feeding him and you don't know what is entering his head. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The second thing is seek counsel. Seek counsel. Many people think this is an act of immaturity. Many of you do not know. Look at me brothers. Let me give you a secret. If you don't respect us, these ladies respect us. Are you listening to me? By the time you start meandering around them, they will call us. They will say, sorry, yo, this guy has been roaming around not to be presumptuous. And you, you think you are playing smartness. Every time you see us, you will claim as if the lady is this and that while the lady has already told us. And you'll be disgracing yourself. Hallelujah. Very important. Seek counsel. There is nothing wrong. We are not demons. You can ask Pastor Jake. There are times that he comes to tell me, ah, so so and so so person. This guy likes this person. No. You can even see me jumping and say, yeah, our people are entering good relationships. There are some relationships when we hear you have entered, we start crying. We start crying. You don't know the guy, but we, we know him. Hallelujah. Please seek counsel. Seek counsel. Don't seek counsel from unbelievers who tell you just try, yo. Oh. There is an age where guys will be coming, oh. You, know, you will get to an age nobody will come, oh. Just try. Uh-uh. Hallelujah. When you are entering into a relationship, friendship, friendship. Now, that does not mean you cannot sit. I know of stories of perfect strangers. They, they call it, what they call it? Love at first sight. I don't know what probability of it works in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Seek counsel. And then, bless you, sir. The next step is, listen, go to God. And I, I want to talk a bit here about the concept of the will of God. Look up, please. As a brother, you love God. You are not a prophet. You are not an apostle. You are just a sincere believer who loves God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And now you see Matilda. You've been looking at her and truly, oh, genuine love, not lost. If you find out that what is wrong with you is lost, come for counseling, not relationship. Counseling. We won't condemn you, but we'll help you. Genuine love, sincere love. Now you are looking at Matilda. Ah, ah. You've sought counsel. You go to God in prayer. Listen, listen. Now, I want to correct a very erroneous concept about what people call hearing God. How many of you have heard what they call vision, seeing vision? That has put a lot of brothers under pressure. Please and please. The vision in Joel 2 was not women. Is that clear? Don't you brothers, please. I deliver you from any heart attack you want to give yourself. To force yourself to dream dreams and see visions. There is nothing wrong. The Bible says God is at work in us both to will. 
Hallelujah. I love God. My heart is sincere. Are you following me now? Now Aaron sees Matilda. And you just say, oh, did you have a vision? It has made a lot of brothers to come with stories about their concept of the will of God. Because they know that if they, that's the gate pass into your life. So they, they've tried and tried. They just say, oh yeah, talk. God told me, please open the gate for me to enter. Be careful. God shows people visions. You don't see vision for any area of your life. When it comes to relationship, you suddenly become a prophet. Who sent you? Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? The, don't be embarrassed. Ah, ah. The other day, you saw Rose. And ah, when you saw Rose, even you, you wouldn't lie. You were praying. The prayer point just disappeared. You cannot even know what I was saying again. And it was sincere. Ah, you try to say myself, behave, please. I'm in the presence of God. You were trying to look at Pastor Jakes. You were seeing Rose again. Ah. Something is happening. Don't feel embarrassed. Are you hearing me, brothers? Don't feel embarrassed. The only thing is check it. Don't be foolish. Some of you, if you see that to you, that's God said. Uh-uh. That's not God said. Because there are some brothers that what is happening to you is just infatuation. Ah, you saw this lady's hair. And wow, you are smiling. One day you see her coming out of Ribadu in the morning. She has not taken her bath. You just hear and say, ah, is that the girl I saw? Ah, I've changed my mind though. And you want to marry her. She will be pregnant too. Don't forget. Help us, Holy Spirit. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? If God shows you a vision, if you are sitting and you just see Abigail, C21. Is that how I mean now, Ribadu? Ribadu is your wife. You just say, yes, Lord. Abigail, where are you? Better come. Don't stop my destiny. You don't do that. The, listen, the Bible says, and Mary kept these things to herself. And you come, you can come to Pastor Jakes and say, sir, this is what I saw about this guy. Because I saw this about this guy. I saw this guy about the lady. They can be able to help you. Are you listening to me? Don't just take initiative on the strength of your vision alone. Your vision can mislead you. The Bible says we see in part. And so we what? Prophesy in part. Are you getting blessed? Please, listen. You love God. You are praying for a life partner. You are saying, oh God, please bring a lady into my life who will love you, who will fear you, who we can stand together and accomplish the purposes of God for our lives. Hallelujah. Suddenly you come for miracle service. You just see Natina. Ah. And now you, you cannot even describe what is happening to you. Mama. <laughs> now Mama is wondering. Ah, ah. Aaron, what is happening? I saw this lady just once. And I. Many of you feel embarrassed. You even cast it. Uh -uh. It may not be demonic. Are you listening to me? Try to establish good friendship with the person. And when you feel you've received advice and the time is ripe, listen, that takes me to the next step. Brothers have courage. Ladies don't kill. I think sisters, we need to tell the brothers this. Say brothers, brothers. We, don't we don't kill. Speak. Speak. Say one more time. Brothers, brothers. Don't look at yourself. Look at the brother. Brothers, brothers. We, don't we don't kill. Speak. The brother says, sisters, I'm not afraid. Listen. There are some of you that kick any guy that comes. Listen, look at me. Look at me. Koinonia, hear me inside and outside. Never, please, let me start with the sisters. Never see a brother, no matter how much you esteem him, that he comes to you and then you try to just do anyhow with him and say, hey, you don't know that shoe has size. You got up. Forget. Don't let Koinonia fool you. I'm not your mate. Oh. Don't be stupid. 
If not because of koinonia that is the house of God, you, you, you cannot see your type, you come and stand. Don't do that. Don't do that. The brother you are laughing at today, wait and see the promises of God in his life. By the time what he's speaking comes to pass, you will be amazed. Are you following me now? I was told a humorous story that there was a time Bishop Oedeko asked a part. I was told, I don't know if it's true. Please, please, oh, I had it too. If it's not true, accept it as fiction. There was a man of God. <laughs> and the man of God said he asked one lady and she said no. He kept quiet. Then he was, there was nothing, just the promises of God. The treasure in earthen vessels locked up inside. Later on, he asked his current wife and she said yes. Some years later on, they were in a program and he saw the former lady. Now she was also married. And he told his wife, he said, see, I asked this woman. And she said no. The woman walked to her and said, thank you for telling my husband no. You think that woman will sleep? Hi! The woman will say, God, no. This is how my destiny passed me by. Many of you want ready-made. You don't want to pay the price and build. Hallelujah. When a brother wants to talk to you, please give him listening ears. Especially when he comes with a heart of sincerity and responsibility. Even if you are not interested in the relationship, present yourself in a way and manner that will not discourage him. There are some brothers, when they ask one sister since 2010, they've not asked another one again. One day you wanted to ask the girl, she just, she was just, you were going here, she just came out, you just turned as if you want to clean a chair. No courage, your heart is failing you. Everybody say, take courage. take courage. Sisters, help our brothers. It's not easy to come and stand before a lady and start rapping and talking stories. Hallelujah. It's not easy. It takes a lot of courage. Brothers, is that true? Especially when you start giving one kind of face. As if you don't like it. You finish praying in your room. And say God change my story. Give the brother a chance. Give him a chance. Please. Hallelujah. Is that true? There are many brothers here that are sitting. They want to enter a relationship. But ladies you are hostile. You are rude. You leave an impression in the heart of the brother that will injure him. It's not fair. Is that true? And then brothers, take it easy. I know that no means wait for a guy. So if the lady tells you no, just don't say me, I don't take no for, I would, ha, 30 missed calls between Koinonia and her room. 30 missed calls. Five text messages. 500 Naira recharge card. You have called all her friends. Take it easy, brother. Haba. Take it, let her think. Say, I can't sleep. Uh-uh. You better check whether it's lost or love. Whatever is pursuing you, run to court. Run to court and go and flog it out with destiny. Don't be a pest around the lady like that. You are going for a lecture, you just say, ah. In fact, you know, I was about to call you. That's how you follow her. She's in the restaurant. You go there. Money that you wanted to go to Jordan Bookstore with, you paid for her food. Now you have not eaten. You are hungry. You've not done your assignment. You are failing. You are emaciating. You are dying. What is wrong with you? <laughs> your roommate say, what is wrong? He say, love. <laughs> it's not love. Hallelujah. Are you learning something, please? Praise the Lord. Very important. Make sure you are convicted. There are some brothers here. Please look up and I must warn you. Everybody say double dating is wrong. Say one more time. Double dating is wrong. There are guys that have ladies in every faculty. Every faculty you have a representative. And they don't know. It's not good. You are, you are a Christian. I hope you know that we don't believe in dating. Are you listening to me? In the kingdom, there is nothing called dating. Correct? You know what dating is, ladies? Let me explain to you so that you hate it very well. Dating is that you parade many ladies. The bachelor. Ask some of them out. Sleep with some of them. 
Do all you can do. And then start editing them one by one. One by one. One by one until you find the one that is suitable with you. You've slept with them. You've taken them out. Which lady? Do you know that every lady you see is somebody else's wife? You don't treat ladies like that. Is somebody learning something? Double dating is very wrong. Very, very wrong. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So brothers, get close to the lady. Develop courage and talk. Sisters, be open. Don't conclude on a guy and just say, this is not my kind of guy. What do you know about all your destiny? Somebody you are seeing today that you say may not be your kind of guy may be the greatest blessing in your life. Is that true? Hallelujah. Let's rush. We have to pray. Now, let's assume you successfully get into the relationship. Say amen. amen. So you have flogged out issues and you are now in the relationship. What do you do? Please write. These are things that you must observe while during the relationship. Number one, practice communication. Practice what? Communication. One of the number one killer of marriages and relationship is no communication. Talk. No matter how bad issues are, talk. Talk. How many of you know that a quiet person can be more dangerous than a noisemaker? Because if somebody is quiet, you don't know what the person has in his heart or her heart. Talk. Talk. Hallelujah. See, because no matter how anointed you are, listen, when you get into a relationship, are you following me? Patience, come. When you get into a relationship, now let's assume Abel is going out with patience. Abel, stand up. Assuming, come now, hold your, up. Hold our hands. Let's save time, please. Hold our hands. Smile, you too now. Smile. <laughs> All right, come. Now, they are in a relationship. Please, everybody listen. Do you know, every time people come to me for counseling and prayers for relationship, I tell them, whenever you enter a relationship, please listen. See yourself as two farmers. Are you following me now? Two farmers holding a hoe together. And you are going to the farm to go and plow the land. Ready-made relationship does not exist. Write it. Everybody has weaknesses and strengths. When you say you love somebody next time, you are saying you love a sum total of their liabilities and weaknesses. Many of you want a perfect man. You want a perfect woman. You will never find it because you are not perfect yourself. Are you listening to me? Now, Ebe, where are you from? You are from Kogi. Where are you from? Now, this is Kogi, this is Benway. Two separate cultures, is that true? Now, they love God. They all come for Koinonia, for instance. For instance, for instance, except otherwise, for instance. Hallelujah. She has her mindset that came from culture. He has his mindset that came from culture. Do you know that there will be frictions? Are you following me now? Those frictions are not a sign that the devil is eating you people up. They are just a sign that you are human beings. Are you listening to me? What is the remedy? Communication. Two of you sit down now. Find somewhere and sit down. Come. I'm the shift for them. Sit down now. We are acting with you. Communication. Communication. Talk about it. Hallelujah. The guy does not eat pepper. You, you like pepper. You like seeing the pepper. You can carry it and put it in your mouth. The first day you made gari for him. You put pepper. You were smiling. Ah, The guy just touched it and a headache just came on him. And now the brother doesn't want to talk. Ah, This pepper is killing him. He said, do you like the food? I said, come on. This food was as sweet as you. And now you are, you are lying. Tomorrow you will suffer it again. She will make beans. Add pepper on it. She'll be telling everybody, do you know my guy likes my cooking? He likes the pepper. Funny enough, this guy is dying. This pepper is killing him. 
every time you eat her food, you must have a runny nose. Brother, what happened? I say, forget this. Everybody say communication. communication. Communication helps you to understand yourself. The Bible says, husbands, dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Love is not enough. Are you hearing me? Have you not seen a lovely roommate that you could not live with? How many of you love your roommates, but you cannot take that same roommate next session? But you love them. Some of you, you that some of you that are raising hands is your roommates that don't love you because of what you are doing. Hallelujah. Everybody say communication. It will enhance your relationship. Are you listening to me? There are many ladies that the moment you enter a relationship, you already have your expectations that only you know. I expect at least I give this relationship five days. I should visit Chicken Republic. That's what you have in your heart. That's what you have wished and wondered. Every time I'm holding load, let the guy. That's what you have in your heart. Are you following me now? After five days, he doesn't take you out. He's paining you. But you cannot talk. Say it so that if it's not godly, you can flog it together. Are you listening to me? Communication is one of the number one killer roommates that don't talk always fight the only way to know that he's angry is when he slaps you you say did he really hurt you he said it has been paining me why didn't you talk or girl roommates why didn't you talk many ladies you are like that you don't talk you go and grumble to your friends and gossip to everybody and say this guy we went to the restaurant sam they were putting the ice cream on the machine chicken republic he just started taking it. Couldn't we sit down? Me, I hate this thing. And you were laughing all through. The euphoria of the excitement. And the guy thought that that's what you like. He will repeat it again tomorrow. Hallelujah. You invited him for dinner. He wore one tie. The shirt was torn. He didn't notice. It wasn't his business. You tell him, ah, sweetheart. Um, see, when there is this chemistry between both of you, you have come to be honest and true to yourselves. Are you following me now? And you can jokingly tell him, say, you, self, I'm going to buy you a new, a new trouser. That your trouser has tried. She has come into your life. You don't joke. You are always serious. You are always praying. You are always fasting. You don't discuss the things you should discuss. If all you are doing in your relationship is Bible study and prayer, you are not helping that relationship. Okay, sister, the Lord gave me a revelation. Shut up. Can't you talk about your lives? Are you not good? What is your best food? There are people, if we call some people in relationship now, you and you, what is your best food? The guy will say, Gary, is his best food. You, you say, is, is beans. You don't know yourselves. You are that much of strangers. Who is the Holy Spirit? You know, you know. What are the 12 names of disciples? You know, you know. When is Jesus coming? Soon, soon, you know. Where are two of you going? You don't know. Don't spiritualize things that you are supposed to do to help yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Everybody say communication. Very important. There must be communication. During a relationship. Number two. Set boundaries. Everybody say boundaries. Paul said the, although we are not under the law. But the Bible says the love of God does what? Please set boundaries. Some of you were in the world. Is that correct? And you had relationships where you were in the world. You could have sex anytime you want. You can spend weekend in the guy's house anytime you want. You can bath with the guy in the same bathroom. Now you are born again. You have left Egypt. Force Egypt to leave your mind. In Jesus' name. Set boundaries. Set boundaries. Hallelujah. You must set boundaries. Stand up again. Two of you come. This side, this side. Let's go. So you discuss. Abel. You are a great man. No, you are going far. But you are a man. Say I'm a man. Part of the reason why you ask this lady out is because you are physically attracted to her. True or false? Please say it. True or false? 
That means if you get married to her, you will sleep with her one day, true or false. And the reason why you are not sleeping with her now is not because you are an angel or a spirit, it's because you love the Lord, true or false. When you enter a relationship, you are vulnerable by default. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying, believers? What does that mean? You define it. What rules that you don't define, you will cross boundaries without knowing. You can be a Christian. Over 60% or more of Christian relationships have people sleeping around. The guy going to spend weekend in the girl's house. The girl going to from Koinonia now. Today is Friday, Abi. The grace of our Lord Jesus, your load is outside. You just carry, the guy takes you in his car. And he just goes, I was a service. Say nice. Even if it's Benny Hinn, you watch throughout that night. Sin is at your door. Correct? Say, but me, I, I'm not, I, I'm, I don't used to sleep with the guy. Yet, 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 keep going every day. The Bible says, and Lord settled near Sodom. He didn't enter Sodom. When they were coming to rescue him, where did they find him? In the middle of Sodom. This is how many people have gotten themselves into trouble. Discuss it. Sister, you are not firewood. Discuss it. You are emotional. Talk. Abel, you tell her. Say, look, I love God. And in this relationship, we are going to keep the values of the kingdom. If for any reason, any spirit or anything turns my head one day, don't be ashamed. This is somebody, are you saying it in, in the presence of the congregation? Please help me. Don't be disappointed that day. Just help me. Slap me or run. Just do something. Remind me of my destiny. Just put a picture of hellfire on your phone. Do something that will help me. Sister, listen. And I must say this. Listen, we are humans. Church people are hypocrites and liars. Me, I'm not like that. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Very important. You can't come and visit him by 11.30 in the night. Eh? He just had practicals morning till night. Then you came around. You say, I, 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 was, I was reading and I didn't know what to do with myself. Ah, you are looking for trouble, oh. You are looking for trouble. The brother is already on his boxers. He's trying to lie down. He's trying to sleep. Now you come in. He's going to marry you one day, oh. He's going to marry you one day. You are fast forwarding that day now. You will die. You are there to protect the brother's life, not to kill him. Can't you talk on phone? Am I, am I blessing you? This is the issue. I know we're out of time. We will pray, but we need to talk about this. It's very important. There are many anointed brothers that suddenly entered relationships and they found out that they are, they are sleeping with the lady and doing a lot of things to their own shock. Because number one, you didn't discuss it. Number two, you are not doing anything about it. Hallelujah. Very important. You must talk about it. Your roommates sleep around and they come and they are talking about all their experiences. All those devilish things. And you sit down, you are hearing it. Now it's affecting your mind. You don't know. You think because you are a Christian, it will just... No, it's affecting your mind. You are getting emotional. You are getting seduced by that statement. Before you know it, you find yourself and the innocent brother, because he likes you, who fall victim. Everybody say, I, I receive grace to set boundaries. Christians, I know what I'm saying may offend some of you because it's a kaya beg, jare, your own. You have gone to extreme. Please, Abba. Well, if your destiny is colorful and you want to get there, Ask yourself a question. Are you ready for a child now? If you are not, behave. Brother, for every time you sleep with a lady, see the vision of a baby. Are you ready? If you are not, behave.
Praise the Lord. Please define boundaries. Christian relationships should reveal the character of Christ. And you, sister, one day something comes upon the brother, whatever it is, instead of you to help the brother, you now start going around, ah, these brothers, I'm surprised, so, Koinonia, shut up, please. Did he tell you it's a spirit? Help him. Help him. Help him. Don't disgrace the brother. Oh, I will talk. Hallelujah. It's very important. Help the brother. And brother, help the sister. When she's calling you and you don't understand what she's saying in the phone. Be talking with one ear. Be praying. Find a way. Let your spirit be praying. Talk about the second coming of Jesus. Talk about the end of the age. Just say something that will bring the sister back to herself. Don't go and spend weekend in a guy's house. You are not married to him. All the sisters say amen. amen. I know many Christian ladies. Once it's Friday, somebody comes from Lagos or somewhere. You go and spend. How can you go and spend weekend in the house of somebody you are already emotionally attached and physically attracted to? You are vulnerable. Hallelujah. You are going to go and bath. The brother is watching you. Ah. You, are, you want to kill the brother? You are bathing. The guy is just singing choruses around your bathroom. Or God, go to the parlor. Trouble. If a guy lives in the house and you go, you can enter the parlor, you can enter the kitchen. But you, you begin to put yourself in trouble. See, all I'm trying to say is that create boundaries. Can I tell you something? Brother, when you start sleeping with a lady, I assure you, your chances of marrying her will diminish by a sizable factor. Because part of the things that you should make, how, make you want that lady is that she's keeping herself. And it's supposed to be the blessing and consummation of marriage. Are you listening to me? Sister, you just open up yourself to any brother. He's just sleeping with you and telling you that, don't worry, in two weeks I will give you an engagement ring. You wait and go and hear what he's saying in the midst of his friends. Hallelujah. Do you know, every time you sleep with a lady or you sleep with a guy that you are not married with, there is a seed of resentment and hatred that comes. That's what happened between Adam and Eve when they went out of the glory of God. Be careful. Be careful. Some of you watch every kind of film. The guy is here, the lady is here. You are watching all kinds. Please, God bless you. Please be seated. You are watching every kind of film. When I talk about all those film things, some of you think it's not an issue. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Put boundaries. Avoid things that arouse you people. Avoid things that arouse you people and get you into trouble. Hallelujah. You just see the guy. You just come and fly on the guy. He's on the bed. You just fly. Ah. <laughs> and the brother is smiling as if he's in control of things. You better, you better start praying. You are not in control. Very important. Hmm. Hallelujah. Build together. Everybody say I will define boundaries. You are in a relationship right now. You have not defined the boundaries. Do it tomorrow. Define it. How far is far? How far is far? Please define it. Hallelujah. Now, I will round up with this. There are many other things, but we're out of time. We really are out of time. Just give me a few minutes, five minutes, and we're out. Danger signs. Oh, this is important. You must write it. Danger signs that your relationship is nose diving or that your relationship may not work out. Danger signs. I must say this. Very important. Number one. When you find yourself consistently violating boundaries, that relationship may not work out. Did you hear what I said? 
are you listening to me what did i say consistently violating boundaries no way a time will come look at me the lady will be so cheap or the guy will be so cheap they will be like a rag for you discontent will enter your heart is somebody hearing what i'm saying take these boundaries issues seriously I know some of you feel, why is he talking like this? Okay. Once you are consistently violating boundaries, every night, every weekend, you are coming to his house, all kinds of things. No. Your chances of getting married are being slashed down seriously. Number two, number two danger sign excessive involvement of third parties in your relationship this is very important there are many of us the number of counselors and senators and members of the house of assembly in your relationship are too much too much you have a senate that decides on everything you want to cook for the guy upper house lower house must decide two of you cannot flog out issues this is what is killing many relationships. Hallelujah. There is too much involvement of third parties. Let me tell you something. God is my witness. And for years we've been doing this. Once we pray for people and bless their relationships, you can ask Pastor Jakes, we stay out. Are you listening to me? We don't come and say, oh, we're leaders over you and we're just scrutin. No, we stay out. We only come in if you invite us. Or where we see that guy, there is a need. Are you listening to me? Listen. If your friend enters a relationship, please stay out. What I mean stay out is define boundaries. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of you are too involved in the relationship of your friends and loved ones. We don't even know whether it's the friends that are in a relationship or you are the one. You are too involved. You can veto things on behalf of your friend that is in a relationship. It's their business. Leave them alone. Please. Go and pray and wait for your own. Leave them alone. Excessive involvement of third parties. Once you start allowing too many people to come into you, they will confuse you. They will make you to make wrong decisions. At the end of it, that relationship will not work. Danger sign number two. Danger sign number three. When you find yourself, this is important. When you are consistently quarreling and manifesting rage over trivial issues, just know that that relationship has entered the beginning of the end. Look up, please. Look up. When Zuera's food suddenly stops being sweet, promise. Food that you used to eat every day. You were lean like you would die. When you entered the relationship, it improved on you. Now you can see Zuera's food is not sweet again. Her hairstyle is not nice again. Are you following me now? Her text messages are not... Once you find yourself edgy over trivial things, your heart has left that relationship. Hmm. Is someone learning something in this place? Quarreling over trivial issues do you know why there is a scripture we will not read it but the bible says first peter 4 verse 8 it says i believe first peter 4 verse 8 if i'm not mistaken love covers a multitude of wrongs look at me when you love someone you will give excuses for the person is that true yeah danger sign i like the red media god bless you red danger sign quarreling and manifesting rage you see a guy just comes this is a lady that before she's your queen eh? transpose let me sing a song by two or three keys you are the reason i'm here you're the one for me you're the one for me that's the song you sang. Oh, don't forget. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. Smile. And the lady is just smiling. 
Now listen. Suddenly. I've got my mind made up. Addressing that attracted you to her suddenly becomes insulting. Everything. Everything. Once you find that kind of quarrel, please, let me tell you something. If you are not ready to marry her, leave her alone. Somebody else will like her. Don't put any lady under your care and frustrate her. Are you listening to me? Sisters, I must tell you this. Danger sign that your relationship will not last. If the guy you are going out with does not have anybody he listens to. Are you listening to me? Don't ever go out with anybody that cannot listen to people. He will kill you. One day he will beat you, stand on you and be stamping you and you will die there and nobody will know. There are some of us, you are going out with guys nobody knows. They don't listen to anybody. Nobody can talk to them. Pastor Jake says, oh, I want to see him. He said, no, please, leave me. That kind of thing will not help you. Hallelujah. When you see these three things, three things happen. Your relationship is nose diving. You need counseling and you need help fast. Hallelujah. Number four, maybe we'll talk about, we'll still talk about it next. We'll stop here. Because I still have a lot of things to talk about. There are two issues I want to talk about that many people don't discuss in relationship. Number one is on the issue of health and marriage. But we'll talk about that next week. Is that correct? Health and marriage. This has become a serious issue. If somebody is an SS... And she comes and she's in a relationship with somebody who is an SS. Can it work? Will they work? Hallelujah. And then the issue of crossing boundaries. Hallelujah. Somebody from Katsina marries an Irobo lady. What, what happens when you are crossing boundaries? The place of family and so on and so forth. And then we'll address the issue of late marriage. Family life. There is a lot we'll talk about. How many of you have been blessed so far? Rise up. Let's pray. We'll take that next week. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray for one minute. Say, Lord, thank you for your wisdom. I believe that God has spoken to many people tonight. There are many of you that need to change things. You need to adjust things tonight. Very quickly, I'm going to pray. Please pray, we're out of here. Jebambrata katala patoko sofeta kata. Please pray. Those of you who have crossed boundaries in your relationship, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I ask for grace. Honestly. Be honest with yourself. No one condemns you, but be honest. Jekapata katabaladaba. Virtues that you need to build. Teachability. Some of you sisters need to go and work on yourself seriously. The way you are right now, you will not be a blessing to any man. You can be a blessing, Kai, but you are not yet a blessing. Same with the brothers. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, help me. Help me. I want my marriage to glorify you. I want my relationship to glorify you. I don't want my children to come and find a curse. I'm tired of the things that I saw in my own family. Hallelujah. 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 There are many of us here right now with all kinds of storms standing before you. Dead sentences given by doctors. Some of you are holding it and wondering, can God change it? There are many of us in situations that only God in heaven. You can't even share it with human beings. Because they do not have the faith to believe a man can be going through this and still be alive. But there is a God in heaven. Brothers and sisters, you are gathered tonight before that God in heaven. There are men who are held in bondage. God has anointed and called them, but the doors of ministry will never open. You know why? Because many of them don't want to serve God. Doing ministry is not serving God. No, sir. Make no mistakes about it. 
you're a man of God here pay close attention let me show you why you keep getting disappointment in ministry you can be anointed praying in tongues raising the dead all that is stories if your heart is not committed to serving the purposes of the kingdom forget about all of these things most people want power when you see a man of God walking in the anointing when you see crowds when you see all kinds of results happening in the life of a man and a ministry many people admire they want it you see God has no problem giving it but your motive your motive your motive oh God give me twins God says even if you want ten I can give you what is your motive let me tell you something this issue of committal to serve God this committal to follow and pursue hard after God is a big secret a big secret the justification behind the stagnancy of many people and the motivation behind them leaving that place to another realm let my people go oh Lord change my financial status God says I can it is within my power but what for and he said God I'm just tired of poverty God says that's not enough reason that's if I give you too much money with no assignment it will kill you it will destroy you the Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them Lord give me a crowd of thousands of people make me a man of influence Lord let people love me let me just be a celebrity and God says it's all within my power justify your reason and he says lord i came from a background of inferiority god says so what that's not a reason for me to trust you with influence and grace but when a man's heart becomes resolute lord grant me finances so that one day i will override the building of your house god says you want to do this for me and then you quote his scripture back for the sake of thy house i desire thy prosperity and god says that's it you satisfy the condition to see my hand lord heal my body i want to serve in your house but the department i want to join requires energy and lord i have found out that i have a medical condition that cannot allow me carry chairs and god says who gave you that condition the moment anything stands between you and serving god it has become god's enemy is god's own fight let me tell you how to join god and satan you service let your problem follow you to the altar of service and stand back and god says whatever stands in the way of any man serving me has become my enemy including a man are we together now when he when 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 the captain of the host of israel appeared before joshua he said are you for us or against you? he said all that is nonsense whoever is on god's side is the person i'm for if you are against god i strike you if you are for God we are a team God is not a Christian God is on the side of whoever has the heart to glorify the father and to see his kingdom come and his purposes established that you're a Christian is no guarantee that you will get the partnership of God your heart is God preaching to someone tonight Lord I want you to launch me far I want you to change my life you have said it's the year of triumph and God says it's not a lie brother there is more anointing and unction than you have ever dreamt to walk in leave all these kindergarten visions here and there there are superior dimensions but your motive you, you pray for 40 days but your motive corrupts it from day one and God says come to a point where your heart is committed to serving me and I will not release do you know my 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 project with God is to come to a point where God is not afraid of doing anything with me or committing anything to me I want to get to that level of trust with God where whether the virtues are with him or with me it makes no difference because it's all his own come on now whether that anointing is in the throne room or walking through my life it makes no difference because it is for his glory tonight hear me it is God's desire to heal you it doesn't take rocket science but now when you become free and energetic what do you do with that strength that's the question God is asking 
Lord, I used to sing well, but then I had an infection that destroyed my voice. And God says, but I've never seen you commit yourself to singing in my house and lifting up my name. And now you want me to clear that throat condition so that you go back and the devil will use your voice for nonsense. And God says, no way. You can cry. You can roll on the floor. If your motive is not intact, forget about the experience of the power of God. Are we together now? Say, Lord. Say it, everybody. Lord, I declare that as you bless me, as you heal me, as you deliver me, I vow to serve you with my life. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back, hey, no turning back. Don't man forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Come on, sing it before him. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Hey, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. It's a costly assumption to assume tonight that everybody wants to follow Jesus he said I've, I've discovered that there are people who genuinely are not interested in following God I'm not talking of self perfection I'm talking of a sincere committal to following Jesus genuinely with your life no way there are many parasites of Jesus financial parasites of jesus there are parasites of kingdom principles they want to use kingdom principles and mysteries as a ladder to become famous sir it doesn't work that way oh please hear me tonight there are people every time you hear a man of god talk about passion for jesus you think they are talking about ordination to ministry no sir is an addiction to see his kingdom come for god's sake what else will i be doing with my life if not lifting up his name jesus i lift up your name jesus i lift up your name that's what i do for a living jesus i lift up your name Time lift your voice and say, Jesus, I lift up your name. I lift up your name. Jesus, I lift up your name. If God cannot find his purposes fulfilled through your life, I tell you, forget about the outstretched hand of God. You hear me say this? Don't let any man fool you. God is not a herbalist. My brother is your heart God is looking for. Not tithe, not offering. Your heart, not music, not just energy. My son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. I want your heart. 
when we talk about Jesus Christ many people frown their face as if you are speaking against civilization the days that will come please hear me people of God the days that will come will require outspoken radical passion for Jesus all this organized civilized nonsense that makes God look secondary will be the recipe for the dominion of darkness over the life of people oh I'm now 25 years don't don't make me look like a child I'm now 30 years I hope you know I'm now the director of A and B and C nonsense and that's the reason why you are David danced before God and his wife said Abba King I'd keep your dignity and David looked at her and said hold on you don't even know the mystery of how you became my wife if you know it you will join me dancing I was a little boy with no hope no destiny didn't read any book I was a smelly shepherd in the wilderness I danced my way beyond any king to get to the throne and now because I am here you carry your dignity the Bible says God had him all and that woman died barren it was not the devil that made her barren let my people go not that they may go around causing trouble and wasting time and just counting age and growing older let my people go that they may go and serve me this issue of living for jesus serving jesus no let bless him accepting him into your heart there are many people when you talk about genuine surrender not coming out to recite an altar call i make up my mind i am for jesus forever they laugh at you they laugh at you because it doesn't make sense to them they don't see the need why should i give my life to jesus i want to be the god of my own self so you manage your life by yourself i want to be the god of my own self so you answer your prayer by yourself i want to be the god of my own self so you mismanage your life by yourself it says submit down to the mighty hand of god then resist the devil and he will flee you know i sincerely see a lot of people great men and women of god who want to walk in the anointing and i see the way they play games with submitting to the authority of christ you will never be trusted with certain dimensions of the anointing until god vets your passion you can't fake it there is a level of kingdom influence and power no it go to a harbor list you will still not get that dimension it takes your heart dead to christ not just living this one you have died to the purposes of the kingdom otherwise you cannot carry certain levels of grace no the kingdom has rules you you can fake it with men but not with god there is a dimension brothers and sisters where god vets your heart and sees that pastor femi will live and die for me i'm not it's not one leg in today and god is not sure what you will become in 2019 no Basanko. 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 please sit down listen to me everyone inside outside the overflows along the road listen i want to make a serious altar call now everybody sit down and listen carefully let me tell you something brothers and sisters coming to surrender your heart to jesus is not an initiation into a religion called christianity now are we together now where you are switching founders from an idol worshiper you were worshiping stone are we together and now you say Kai, stone is not a better alternative 
so i come to another founder there are not ten gods there is one god hear ye o israel the lord our god is one god i don't care who preaches what there is only one god the king eternal we can argue it but one day very soon the difference will be made clear there are people seated here listening to me i don't condemn you but brothers and sisters it's time to be serious with god shortly you're going to experience radical deliverances and healings and miracles but that is only useful when your heart is with god i don't care whether you have been a pastor for 10 years there are two altar calls i'm going to make in one right now please hear me carefully those following us online from any nation you're following just listen carefully you may not be able to run out but i want you to pay attention and participate number one there are people for you you have never made a genuine decision you have heard that people repent you have heard that people come to jesus you have even given them transport money but genuinely from your heart my father is a pastor that's not what i'm saying i grew up in a church you are joking you have to come genuinely we gave our lives to christ it's not an inheritance of a family you come personally the other day they blessed all of us together you are not born again it has to be genuine personal and conscious when i was a baby they baptized me come and join them as soon as i made that altar call you come and join them are we together number two there are those who the war of passion and seriousness with god there is this fear of getting serious with god for some reason you think if i get serious with god my, i won't make it in life the moment i'm serious with god i won't get a nice husband uh, men these days don't like serious ladies who, who lied to you which men which one are you talking about the drunk are there the smoke are there or a genuine holy ghost born again visionary brother if i'm serious with god when it's time to chop in the office my conscience will not allow me chop that's a joke is it that god cannot bless you must you bribe to rise that's how everybody is doing it you are lying that's not how every that's how you know or you have been taught that everybody is doing it elijah said i'm the only one god said keep quiet there are seven thousand others who have not bowed to bear please hear me there are people here god wants to visit your family but there is no one in your family who is born again and you will be the first tonight because god needs an access point to your family the system of the kingdom is such that god must find a portal within a territory to manifest his purposes within that territory if and when god does not find a man his power is still limited there must be an individual through sacrifice and alignment who will be able to host the purposes of the kingdom within a sphere to allow the possibilities of god find expression so if god wants to come to your family he moves everywhere and everybody says I'm, I'm, I'm too busy he comes to your mother she says i'm too busy looking for money he comes to your father i'm too confused to give my life to you comes to your brother no I'm, I'm too i'm too i want to marry now god please go somewhere he comes to your sister i'm looking for men there's no time to look for god and god says i want to step into this family no one has given me space if god can find one person he, he needs to take it step by step when he finds you the prophetic implication of your relationship starts judging the powers of darkness one by one and before you know it someone starts having a strange dream in your family he lies down and he has a dream of rapture he won't share it but that dream would torture him till he thinks about it he would get up alone and you find out for the first time he didn't steal money again he saw angels he saw the white throne he doesn't need to know what it is his spirit has been designed to recognize spiritual things but tonight you must come genuinely to jesus don't come out here if you are playing games it has let me tell you the implication of coming out here you must be ready to scatter and destroy wrong dangerous and ungodly relationships 
by the grace and the spirit of God you just need the will the grace is what you receive here number two you must be ready and willing to be committed to the house of God to grow this dilly darling with God is the recipe for failure I'm too young to reject God the fierceness of life will destroy me if at my level in life I claim I'm too big for God before we continue tonight I'm going to count one to ten listen everyone heard me loud and clear overflow outside overflow along the road as I'm speaking to you the Holy Ghost is probing you those of you standing on the fence there I see you and the Lord is speaking to you online probably you are listening now or following from another nation of the world and you are saying but I'm far distance is no barrier it doesn't matter you are still on earth everyone on earth will be judged whether you are in London whether you are wherever I'm going to make this altar call now I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come to Jesus I know you will be healed young and old I don't care how long you have been you are saying Lord I'm tired of living my life the way I want I want to hand it genuinely inside outside start running one to ten one genuinely run like there's fire on the mountain two Three. So keep coming. Don't say there's no space. Even if you have to line up outside, no problem. This is your salvation with God greater than any miracle tonight. Just find somewhere to stand. If the place is full, keep lining up there, right outside. Five. Someone is still thinking about it and saying, Apostle, I'm a nice person. I've never done anything wrong. It's just that I've not declared Jesus. Join them. By the self-righteousness of no man can he be saved. You didn't do anything wrong. But that very nature of darkness is resident upon you. All of you who are standing here, please don't look at anyone. Lift your voice in one minute and begin to talk to Jesus. Everyone who is standing, stretch right outside and those online. Talk to Jesus right now. And say, Jesus, I come to you. I come to you pray talk to him and everyone seated I expect you to be praying for someone's salvation you know everybody around you cannot be saved there is somebody somewhere still hardened towards the things of God lift your voice and cry to Jesus Lord I'm saved but my father is not saved he's on his way to hellfire and I know it my mother is not saved I know today that if the trumpet sounds they are going to hell for sure I know my sister is not saved my husband is not saved my wife is not saved my colleague in office is not saved Lord I know that pastor is not saved he has a church but is not saved pray cry your heart to Jesus he is here much miracle service you are meeting with the Savior he wants to reveal himself first as Savior before deliverer before healer hallelujah hallelujah all of you standing stretched to the outside please look at me I see you some of you are crying sincerely from your heart listen there is no man who has the power and authority to condemn you young and old I don't care what you have done I don't care how your life is we are all products of his mercy and grace are you hearing what I'm saying don't let any man point an accusing finger but then you cannot remain where you are 
there are people standing here and say man of god if you will lead me to pray i will i will love it i've been praying for an opportunity like this but there are powers always keeping me wherever you are inside outside don't mind who is looking at you lift your right hand to heaven and you're going to say this prayer after me please it is not a poem it is a genuine genuine prayer meaning from the depth of your heart he says i am not ashamed of the gospel why for it is the power of god unto salvation the lord wants to give you a new beginning i know you came to be healed but he wants to take over your destiny with your hands lifted to jesus who is here not in heaven right here in this place say after me passionately and sincerely say lord jesus i love you with all my heart this night i have heard your word and i make up my mind that from tonight and for the rest of my days i will live for you i will serve you without shame without fear without going back this night i hand over my life to you say it again i hand over my life to you be my lord be my savior i declare that the power of sin of satan of the flesh is broken every association that is not of god i'm separated from them this night i declare that the joy of salvation and the peace and a new beginning is mine from today i am a child of god and i will live for him forever hallelujah keep your hands lifted jesus look at the ones you died for when you hung upon that cross you saw them and today we are glad to present them to you this is why you put this meeting together we lift them up as trophies worthy trophies for your blood worthy trophies for your death and lord i decree and declare that this ones you have brought tonight none will be lost i speak over your life the joy of salvation that very few people know about may it be your inheritance today i declare that the peace that surpasses all understanding let it be yours today i declare that every guilt the devil uses against you every accusation will roll it away right now in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven by the message of god i declare that you have a new beginning with god you are empowered by the spirit to live a victorious life in the name of jesus christ amen and amen let's appreciate them keep standing everyone i'll give you some instructions now now there are so many of you probably hundreds of you this is what i want you to do um protocol please help coordinate let's do it this way those of you who are in the second overflow the overflow right from the door that leads to the road as you go out please let's have some of the ushers you stand so they can attend to you there what will happen is they are going to have your details i know you are all so many but we want your details we have a system to follow you up and to make sure you are grounded in god that's number one that's the first instruction so those outside those here at the overflow and those inside you may not need to go out just wait where you are and someone will come to attend to you please i hope the relevant departments are listening so that we can respond to them very quickly we have five ten minutes for this because i'll start praying for the sick now praise the lord now the second instruction i want to give all of you is this the bible says they that be planted in the house of god it says they shall flourish it is important not only for you to just get born again but to be planted in the house of god instruction number three is we have a system of spiritual growth here in koinonia it's a very large house 
so what we do is that anyone who gets born again automatically we transfer them to our prayer department for one month whether or not you will continue as a member in the prayer department the prayer department meets tuesdays 4 p.m just at the church uh, when you walk from this road right down rema chapel more information will be communicated to you and so we usually have all um, new converts to be part of the prayer department there you get to be filled with the holy spirit and you have seasons of prayer to build your spirit and it helps you to cultivate a culture of the word and also to have a kingdom community that supports your spiritual growth all these things are very important for your growth i don't want you to waste this experience praise the lord i bless you in the name of jesus and shortly the lord is going to be turning your life around in greater dimensions so let's do this very quickly appreciate them as they go just guide them whether or not you belong to any department you're a member of koinonia you see any of them moving just guide them as they go out quickly let's honor them koinonia as they do so is that the best you can do hallelujah please coordinate them coordinate them let's just give them some room so that they can go out and then we will shake off every power of darkness roaming around anybody's life i never see anyone like you i never see anyone like you hey, i never see anyone Wait, Sam, help me. Like I never see anyone like you. 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 everyone stand up let's pray some prayers before let's pray some prayers while they are working on the people everyone say after me in the name of Jesus please say be serious in the name of Jesus father tonight visit me this is my destiny Give me strange results. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Visit me. In the name of Jesus, visit me. Step into my destiny. Step into my destiny. Step into my destiny. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Shout it again in the name of Jesus. Every long standing issue in my life. And my destiny I declare that you must give way tonight lift your voice and begin to pray long-standing challenges are you praying tonight long-standing Shabbat Shalom. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, if you can pair yourselves into two and pray this prayer. If you are holding a child or you are doing something, that's all right. Otherwise, find somebody, a serious neighbor, hold a hand. I want you to agree. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the door for the next level of my life and that of my neighbor must be open now. Lift your voice and pray. Agree. If any two shall agree as touching, believe in what you are saying, you are opening doors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are still holding your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, take away shame. Take away mockery from my life, my family, and my neighbor. Lift your voice and pray seriously. Roll away the reproach. Roll away the reproach of mockery. Roll away the reproach of shame. Roll away the reproach. Pray. Roll away the reproach. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, expose every force, every yoke, every spirit behind the tragedies in my life, in my destiny, and my family. Expose them tonight. Lift your voice and pray. For the light shines in darkness. Pray for the light shines in darkness. Let your light shine, O God. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your anointing, let your unction locate me tonight and turn my life around. Lift your voice and pray that the power of God must locate me. Change my destiny. Let your power pray. One encounter with the anointing of the Holy Ghost can wipe your tears, my brother, my sister. Pray. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, 
lights below, lights below, light menorah, lights below. Listen, listen to me. I will just give you an instruction. Just help those under the anointing, but listen to me carefully, please, everyone. Do you know the reason why we minister deliverance? Listen, listen carefully. You have to understand this. The reason why we minister deliverance, you don't spend your whole life going through deliverance. However, there are lives come at you when a spirit listen carefully when a spirit latches onto your life and destiny brothers and sisters let me tell you i don't care what you do physically remember spiritual intelligence you can be doing the right physical things but the presence of a spirit representing an embargo representing a covenant an authorization for your doom will keep you down there and you find out that your life will never open up when people gather like this hear me they come with prayer requests they come with problems but you see behind those problems are spirits are we together now the spirits that are responsible for lack of favor the spirits that are responsible for a hard life the spirits that are responsible for infirmity all kinds of cases you know one of our dear people here in the ministry i prayed over the father's picture i've seen those kinds of cases on television and all of that but you could look at the leg and see the bone the bone the flesh had eaten to a point that you could see the bone what happened to the man he went to bed in the night brothers and sisters i think somebody did something for him in a dream and he woke up physically and his legs started eating up the bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness you want to move forward but there is an embargo the solution is not counseling you need an encounter with power everybody say power listen the power of the holy spirit is not a negotiator it's an enforcer when the power of god comes it does not ask you whether you want to be free your assignment is to be open till it reaches you when it comes it scatters anything that does not look like god lift your hands everyone just lift your hands and be silent i'll pray for you now the spirit of god is upon me lift your hands everyone there are people here right now I want you to bring there the first sets of people who will come out ushers grace for you and protocol i know you have a lot of work today because there's such a crowd right to the road but i want to pray everyone please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people right now in your silence hold on maybe just this the power of god will begin to come upon you what is happening right now before we pray for the sick is massive deliverance that deliverance is equal to breakthrough equal to new levels but lift your hands there are people here who are under strong yokes of delay and the lord gives me an instruction we will just lift our hands and be silent that's all the instruction and inside and outside the spirit of god will begin to locate them 
are we together when that happens then we'll take it off from there that's the first thing God wants to do tonight just lift your hands everyone thank you Jesus the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands and there are people and families and those following on online except you are not under the influence of the spirit of delay that spirit must leave you are we together so keep your hands lifted thank you Jesus Lord wherever they are right now I stretch my hands according to the instructions you have given me inside and outside right now I see the anointing of the spirit already falling over the spirit of delay keep your hands lifted Shalakataya. bring them out outside there just the angels of the Lord are walking I'm seeing like smoke just moving across lines line by line inside and outside when it comes to you when you are under that influence that's the end of it right now I command it the word of the Lord is upon this prophecy in the name of Jesus no instruments don't play anything outside there is massive deliverance happening separation from delays separation from delays bring them out thank you Jesus delays you want to move forward but the spirit ties you down it's over right now no you can't dodge it you are under an atmosphere there is an influence the influence of the spirit line by line the Holy Ghost is moving row by row there is no faking it line by line Lord every row every line every individual let no one in this category escape it for the sake of your mercy and your grace no matter where you are inside and outside online don't worry the spirit of God is moving one by one it must catch up with you the word of the Lord is upon it bring them out young old destinies that have been delayed tonight there is serious grace for deliverance those of you lifting up your hands be sensitive be sensitive we're in a prophetic atmosphere right now bring them i see people outside kai my god 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 many people many people many people many people there's someone you are following from kenya you are watching from a laptop the anointing your hands are shaking the spirit of the lord is upon you judging every darkness shalabakatayabara tonight you will be located by god you prayed it you must be free please help the ushers if there are too if there are too few protocol join them different departments help them the lord really wants to set people free it's a year of triumph don't think these people are just coming out for show they represent breakthroughs these are the people who god wants to give testimonies darkness raging over the lives of people they came from different places how will god leave them that way right now all of you in front here i decree and declare to those spirits at the count of three let them go you know my voice one two three go 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 out of their lives now out now i command you by the influence of the spirit i decree and declare let their destinies go delay broken hallelujah now lift your hands my god you'll be surprised at what will happen now everyone say after me in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus the grace 
for open doors right now break every chain in my life keep your hands lifted watch it happen now that's the instruction God gave me that grace breaking chains now I'm speaking across the congregation I have been seeing this for weeks padlocks opening in the realm of the spirit that's what the Lord is showing me padlocks opening 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 right now I open them I'm under the shadow of yours Your influence is all over me I'm under the shadow of yours Your influence is all over me I'm under the shadow Your influence is all over me lift your hands lift your hands fire is coming on 32 people and this fire that is coming upon them is to break family altars I hear family altars right now oh God in the name of Jesus one two three I set those altars now on fire right now 32 people I see in the realm of the spirit I command it right now I command it everyone on this ground under the influence of any altar now be free now help them please help that lady be free now right now be free now be free now your influence is all over me I'm under the shadow of your own everyone lift your hands say this after me in the name of Jesus please say it seriously say in the name of Jesus any spirit that has had access to my life and is causing destruction hear the word of the Lord as I shout the name Jesus I command you to live my life at the count of three shout Jesus there will be an exiting of many strange spirits one two three shouting I command spirits you go now you go now you go now you go now inside and outside any spirit resident within any man's life any woman's life causing pain as I pray for grace for you in Jesus name because what I see now is not a nice scene the Lord is asking me that we shout Jesus there are people who are going to vomit physical things that's why I said it's a messy scene I, I apologize we're very neat and organized people inside and outside but in the name of Jesus right now any stranger in your body at the count of three must go out now one two three i command every stranger go now every poison every devil go 
seen sicknesses. Every fibroid, every devil, every enchantment. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a vision of a lady. If you're here, I want you to come out. I'm seeing your family doing something like a sacrifice, and they are giving somebody, everybody, a substance like a drink, something to take. They gave everybody, including you, and you took it. Where is that person? Please, if you're here, I want you to come out quickly. It's a, it's a highly diabolic thing they gave everybody. Where are you? Come. Your deliverance comes now. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Help me. Your influence is all upon me. Let's have another mic, please. Hold on. Stand up, my dear. Is this the lady? Two of them? Stand up. Where are you from? Look at me. Huh? Kogi State. What happened to you? Hold on. I combated. Hold on. I'm looking at you, Kai. This thing. You entered a covenant. Huh? Yes. With who? I don't know my mother. I don't know. They she brought somebody, and you people entered a covenant and they gave you something. Hold my hands. Shout Jesus. Jesus. I command that covenant, Jesus. that demonic thing, tying your life. In this miracle service, it lives now. In the name of Jesus. You too? Where are you from? I'm from Kogi State. You are from Kogi State. The same thing. Hold my hands. Look at me. I command that devil to leave you now. Whatever yoke. Please don't come out if I don't call your case. Are you part of them, Mr. Man? Young man, you're part of them. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. Bring the, you, you two. Come, make sure that, so that we don't get the place rowdy. Be delivered now. Help her. Out! Be free now. Out! I'm interested in this lady. Please, stand up, my dear, if you can. This lady's whole family is in bondage. Whole family. The entire family. Nothing is working in your family. The Lord wants to deliver you right now. Hold my hands. I command that spirit. Your time is up. Leave this family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the yoke over your life now. Out! Now! There is a lady you have been coughing blood where are you you are coughing literally and blood is coming out there is a lady like that please where are you let's hurry up we have a lot to do this night the lord is asking me to minister to a lady that coughs and then blood you cough blood who is that inside outside except you are under the anointing please come out quickly i want to pray for that person now where are you how long hold on just just keep up where's the mic how long you you are an usher you how long three weeks eh? three weeks. for three weeks you've been caught lay your hand on your chest you too lay your hands on your chest you too huh substance your what hold on please guys hold on yours is what the substance you spoke about what substance lift your hands lift your hands lift both of them i'm seeing an angel pouring something on your hand your hand will start shaking and then the lord is bringing you strange deliverance it will start from your hands down to your body i place the word of god upon your life right now in the name of jesus christ both of you look at me both of you cough out blood in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon you it ends now in the name of Jesus out right now there are spirits responsible for this kite 
Do you know what I just saw? The Lord opened my eyes and I saw like a cage. And in the cage, I saw snakes. That's all I'm seeing. That's all I'm seeing. Lift your hands, everybody. The Lord is just asking me to wave my hands over the congregation. There are people who represent that oppression. It will leave now. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. Lord, as you have said, I see snakes in cages. Whose destiny is that? Right now, whose destiny is that? I wave my hands in the name of Jesus. Please release them for your glory. Release them now. Help them, please, Jesus Christ. Inside, outside. Be out of that cage now. I see snakes, serpents. Some of you see them in your dreams. They must go now. They are leaving you now. Now. They are leaving you now. I command liberty. 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 Hallelujah. I'm hearing a name, Jane. Jane, like J A N E. Jane. 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 I'm also hearing another name, Victory. Is it Victory? Like Victory. Victory. Please don't come out if that's not your name. What's your name? Jane. Your name is Victory. Where are you from? Delta State. Delta State. I have to pray for you. Your family is being seriously oppressed. Why are you people here? You are all Jane. Jane, your name is Victory. I want to pray for you. Kaza Chat. Kaza Chat. Is it Kaza Chat? Who is that? Kaza Chat. I'm hearing that name. That's that's like a Kaduna name. Kaza Chat. Please, who is that? The breakthrough of your family has come. Kaza Chat. Is it? I don't know why God is going to Kaduna now. Nom. Is it Nom Shu or Nom Shu or something like that? I don't know if there's a name like that. Nom Nom Shu or something like that. Nom something. Please, if that is your name, you are. Why are they here? I call their names. I'm going to lay hands on you. Except for you, I don't even know why the rest of you are. But please, I want you to believe. The moment I lay my hands on you, something will happen. The Lord is saying I should start with you. Lord, open her door now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands. Reproach leaves your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Reproach leaves your life now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Reproach leaves your life now. Reproach leaves your life now. Hold my hands. Call your parents and tell them the Lord is giving them breakthrough. Your family, your entire family. Delta State. Breakthrough right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on. The serious witchcraft over your life. Hold my hands. Lord, the Lord is asking me to walk with you. This is how your destiny is opening up. That's what the Lord is asking me to do. Walk with you. To walk with you. Something is happening. It's a prophetic act. You will not help her to walk with you. Opens in the name of Jesus. Your destiny opens up now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. This girl. Lift your hands where you are. I'm seeing wind around you. And the Lord is that wind is going anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. And the Lord said his restoration. I stretch my hands upon you right now. I release that grace for restoration. Restoration. There are seven other people who will tap from this anointing. This same anointing right now. Seven. Seven. Right now. The anointing for restoration is coming upon them. Receive it right now, wherever you are. Zabata kata la kata frate kese brende gatai. Lekate pras kata baratu shubre diara. Hallelujah.
I'm seeing one mama outside. It's like you came here with your daughter or something. I'm seeing a woman sit down with her daughter outside. Now that's all I'm giving about you. Please, if you can find that woman and if you understand what I've said, I want you to run and come. I want to pray for the sick now, but God is delivering people. God is delivering people. Seth. Seth. Who is Seth? S-E-T-H. S-E-T-H. Your name is Seth. 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 The Lord is stepping into his life right now. Seth. Is there someone with that name? Seth. Have you found the mama I'm talking about? Don't worry. Let them come. Let them come doesn't matter with your daughter mama Kai. there is the spirit of death on your family I'm going to pray for you don't be afraid I'm not a prophet of doom you came from where mama I came from Edo State from Edo State you live in Wusasa, yes. but you came from Edo State. Yes. I must pray for you. There, why is he here? Who is this gentleman? Seth. You too. You are an usher. Okay. Kai, this is not the set I'm seeing. No, I will pray for you, but I'm seeing someone else. Eh? Please don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for somebody now. Huh? Because I'm seeing an accident killing you. And you took, what's the name of this thing they take? Wee wee. And you were high. You were about to cross the road. And then I'm seeing a truck with the name Angote on it. Just running and killing you. There is somebody here. You smoke. Please don't be, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's not like you are not a serious person. But this thing, you started taking it from when you were small. And it's destroying your life. You want to be free. But you can't leave it. Please don't be ashamed. Come out now. Quickly, please. If you are still thinking about it, remain on your seat. Some you have to be free now. Come out. I'm seeing one. You wore jeans dress. Like your shirt. I don't know if it's your shirt, it's jeans. Who is that? No, no. There, there's another. Come out. I will pray for you. This this is not the only guy. Just keep them here. I will pray for him. I'm seeing another person outside the second overflow. You are standing on the road. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. Speaking to you. This thing they roll and they smoke. And then you even, I'm seeing you swallowing a drug. I don't know what drug is that. Please come out. Come out. Clap for them as they come out. Join them quickly and come. Whether I mention your case or not. You are involved in any kind of liquor and addiction. India, hem, whatever, forward march. Come here, your salvation. Come, sir. Please appreciate them. Clap for them. Some of them are not bad people. It's a spirit. Don't be ashamed. Please, usher, uh, direct them so that they come here. I'm seeing up to five ladies in this group. Up to five ladies. Come. Don't be ashamed. Don't let anyone laugh at you. Please, this is a miracle service. Join them. We, we, Codeine, whatever it is, join them. Whether you know the name of what you are smoking or swallowing or not, come and join them. Please, quickly, that addiction must be broken now. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Coming, the devil is a liar. Who can stand against our king? No one can, no one will. Oh, 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 I'm seeing a very small boy, very small boy, very small boy. Who is supposed to join them? Young man, please hold on. 
please if the parents of the boy are here don't flog him please this is a very small boy you will not even know that this boy is wise to smoke this thing he saw an elderly person smoking it come out there is a small boy here i know what drag him out come where is the boy come out please gentlemen i'm going to pray for you don't worry you are not bad people i'm seeing a number of ladies up to five ladies they are refusing to come out there's nothing to be embarrassed jesus christ wants to set you free this is a miracle service it's not like you have evil people that's not what we're saying it's a spirit you don't stop by counseling mama there is a spirit of death over your family and i will pray for you i will pray for you in the name of jesus who is this your daughter what's your name my dear Is this mic working? Can you add Lillian, the voice? Lillian. Lillian, what do you want God to do for you? I want God to heal you. What's wrong with you? I've been having problems with my tongue. No. 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 You had a dream. Huh? You saw a snake. You can't even remember it. And from that day, you started having serious problems with your stomach. Huh? What's wrong with you? I've, I've, I've got to test. And, 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 and they told me that it's a, a liver problem. Liver problem. Because I look at you and you would think you are pregnant. But you are not pregnant. Your stomach is swelling up. Mama, is that true? How long has it been? It's out of three years now. Look at, look at, look at evil and wickedness. Are you married? Because you see now assuming a brother has been trusting god to marry this sister do you think the brother will marry her please help me do you think he will marry her you look at her now and you think she's five or six months pregnant but she's not pregnant Kai. there is a lady who has refused to come out the power of god is going to come upon her outside you are supposed to be part of those who will be delivered here i'm seeing the angel of the lord outside that lady you were a sincere lady but i, I don't know if it's um, another lady i don't want to say what i'm seeing not to embarrass you because the, what you were introduced to is not only smoking this there are other things that i see that i may not be able to talk about I'm, I'm asking you to come out god wants you to be free for the sake of your family the power of god is going to come upon you outside outside to be free of this thing my dear look at me this is koinonia the lord is going to set you free you believe in miracles mama you believe in miracles yes, i have to pray for you money runs away from you huh madam i will pray for you mama yeah do you hear how sir okay this is your daughter please be comfortable whatever language you can speak there is an interpreter here nobody says you must be able to speak english or whatever any language please if i call you here or you stand here for healing don't be under any pressure to say you must whatever language is comfortable speak it if i don't understand we'll find somebody to interpret please don't put yourself under pressure and say no we are excellent people but we are not fools we can't put anyone under pressure hallelujah mommy I want to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing restoration to your life. This is what I am seeing. And the Lord is asking me to pray for you. Can I pray for you, ma'am? I will pray for you. Ah. I have to pray. I'm seeing not you, but I'm seeing somebody close to you having an accident, traveling to Abuja. And having an accident we have to pray i'm not saying it will happen once god reveals it is broken lord jesus stretch your hands and let's pray for this mommy you don't have to know her please stretch your hands and pray lord we avert death we avert death now in the name of jesus christ we avert death by the power of the holy ghost mama
is there a name like Gracilda? Is it Gracilda or Gracilda? Gracilda or Gracilda, something like that. Gracilda, Gracilda, something like that. If that sounds like your name, I'm sorry if I don't mention it well. The Lord kept mentioning it in my ears. Gracilda or Gracilda, something like that. If that is your name, please come out. Eh? Jacinta. No. But come. Where are you coming from? Zaria. Zaria. I have to pray for you. There's a gentleman who will destroy you. Be free now from every influence. Hold my hand. Anybody that is not designed by God, I separate you and him forever. Say amen. In Jesus' name. Gracilda. Gracilda. I'm hearing Gracilda. Something Gilda. Please. If it's not you, no problem. But that's what I'm hearing. Mama, let's pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. New beginning for you. Hold up, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, lay your hands on your stomach. Kai. Lord Jesus, you gathered people here tonight to set them free. I cause the spirit responsible for this. I decree and declare that this stomach will shrink. Every devil will go away in the name of Jesus Christ. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. Look at me and you will never be barren in your life. Say amen. There are two ladies, you are inside here. There is an embargo of barrenness on your family. Fire is coming on those two ladies now to break that embargo. You don't even know. It's in your family. It may not be in your life. But I'm seeing it right now. The angel of the Lord is locating two ladies right now. And is breaking that embargo. Thank you, Father. I put the word of God upon this prophetic word. That embargo is broken right now right now right now two ladies two ladies there's no reason why you should come here and your life should be the same mama i will pray for you this is your daughter do you know that god is going to use this girl god will use your daughter for his glory hold my hands my dear there's small girl now but god will use you in the name of jesus christ I anoint you. Mama, I decree and declare, let hardship live your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, let hardship live your life. In the name of Jesus. Hold on. I'm seeing a wind and the Lord is asking me to follow it. This is somebody's deliverance here. This is somebody's deliverance here. This is somebody's deliverance here. This is somebody's deliverance. The power of God is coming upon a few people as I'm walking across this place. This is somebody's deliverance. This is somebody's deliverance. Lord, set them free right now. Right now. Right now. I'm seeing something rolling around this row. This row. This row. This row. Shala sobariatas kabandabria. There's no hiding. There's no hiding. Someone in this row. Someone in this row. Someone in this row. Hardship over your family is being broken right now. I'm stretching my hands. This row. Right there. Father, locate that person right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, come. I want you to rejoice. Look at me. The Lord, hold on. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that where you have been crying, you will begin to laugh. You have been crying for 30 years, and the Lord is saying, Your breakthrough has come. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please shoot for me. Come, madam. Hold my hands. The Lord is there and should tell you it's your season of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your season of laughter. Your season of laughter. Look at me. Lose her hands now. Lose her hands now. Lose her hands now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ let her hands be loose your hands are tied I lose your hands in the realm of the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ open doors open doors open doors open doors open doors that's what the Lord is saying open doors the Lord has said you have waited too long it's time for the door of your destiny to be open open doors come there is a spirit in your life that makes bad boys look for you hold my hands leave her now out out when bad boys see you they can't leave you as they are passing they see you that spirit calls them back i don't know who this girl is you are a small girl but the things you know are what you have done out now in the name of jesus you have gone to places you should not go you have you have the phone numbers of people that if we know now i'm not saying you're a bad girl it's a spirit including married men they will be minding their business that spirit will call them to you i command that devil to leave you now leave you now in the name of jesus christ i want us to pray for this gentleman before we pray for the sick you see let me tell you something addiction is a very wicked spirit don't look at them especially our dear sisters my brother what happened to you eh? gone short gone short yes, who shot you i'm a soldier i was shot by my colleague you are meduguri yes sir no he wanted to kill you eh? yes. but he didn't kill you he was directed to kill you Hi. you are a soldier how long has this been it's going to seven months now seven months which where did they shoot your legs and you can't walk with it look at me you believe in miracles lift your crutch lift it lift it come come lift your legs go ahead you're a soldier lift your legs look at this come on koinonia look at this lift your crutch up look at this look at this Look at this. Walk as fast as you can. Don't be afraid. Turn around. Turn around. Come. Because your wound is not healing. There is a wound, but there is not healing. From today, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord who has perfected this leg will also perfect you. Where are you now? You are in Zaria. You are still in the force yes you are still in the force yes, huh? yes sir i want to pray for you do you believe god can favor yes sir i have to pray for you god is going to connect you with a senior person and he will lift you huh? look at me brothers and sisters i want to break this addiction from your life now are we together you are very sincere people some of you were initiated into this thing by bad friends some of you were initiated into these things by spirit i'm going to lay my hands on you while the congregation whether your child is here or not whether your brother is here or not as you are praying you are sowing a seed for your own home are you hearing what i'm saying stretch your hands don't look at anybody's face and run your mouth on any it's none of your business Koinonia is, a, is like a hospital. Stretch your hands. I will lay my hands on every one of them. Please, all of you should pray. I want to break addiction from your life. Don't feel condemned. Jesus will help you. It must be broken right now. Broken right now. Broken right now. Any kind of addiction. Out, out, now, out, out. In the name of Jesus, out. Look at this guy, out. Break from his life now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, be set free. Be set free. As soon as I lay my hands on you, continue praying. Be set free. Addiction, break! 
break in the name of Jesus. Hold my hands, darling. No addiction for liquor. No addiction for drugs. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing something like an arrow coming out of your head. Out of her life now. In the name of Jesus, I break that addiction. Ah. Hey, Jimmy, come. The Lord is saying you should pray for this guy. He will pray for you. This guy needs serious prayer. Just lay your hands on him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Out! Out! Now! I command that devil. This is somebody that loves God, but this addiction must be broken right now. I break it right now. I break it right now. Hold my hands. You are a nice lady, but we have to break this thing. Lord, please, for your mercy, let it be broken in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to minister to somebody. I'm seeing a very interesting case. You love God. Please don't be ashamed. There is a particular pain reliever you are addicted to. Who is that person? I want to pray for you now. Whether you are sick or not. Come and stand here. Particular pain reliever. You can't help it. You can wake up 1 a.m. in the night and swallow it. It's a spirit. Pain reliever. I'm not saying you are sick and they gave you in the hospital. God is visiting addictions this night. Quickly, come. Don't sit back and say, I'm all right. Allow God set you free. Let them come. Look at this. Pain. I don't know what it is, but I hear my spirit pain reliever. Whether you are sick, whether you are fine, the urge will hook you and you have to go and get it. If you, you can prefer to take it than to eat food, it must go right now. That's why God put this meeting to help people. There's one of you, fire is coming on you now. After that fire comes on you, then I'll pray for the rest. That's the instruction God is giving me. One of you, fire, literal fire is coming upon you from heaven as i lay my hands upon you that addiction breaks right now stretch your hands and pray for them don't feel embarrassed broken now broken now broken now in the name of jesus addiction broken now broken now by the power of the holy ghost broken now broken right now by the power of the holy ghost broken now broken now if you have for prayers just move them forward broken now in the name of jesus broken now in the name of jesus broken now in the name of jesus it's broken now in the name of jesus broken in the name of jesus place your hand on your stomach God is not only setting you free, he's setting you free from something else. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Addiction broken now. Addiction broken now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Addiction is broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Broken now. Hold my hands. Let her go in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a spirit that wants to destroy your life. I command now, there's no hiding place for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you must be set free. You are standing in for somebody, no problem. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural freedom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, 
praise the Lord. Please, except you are nursing a child or doing something, let's all rise. Those outside, they are still praying for you, no problem. All other people, please stand up. Rise up, I want us to pray. If you are yet to submit your prayer request, please do it quickly. The Bible says, unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come. In one minute, God can turn your life around. Everyone stretch your hands here and pray. I'm going to lay hands on the request. Pray passionately from the depth of your heart. Lord, I will not have to write this again. Pray. I've written it. The Bible says after two days, please, if there are still people coming, bring it quickly. It says after two days, he will revive us and on the third day, he will raise us up. Online, here, please pray. I'm laying my hands on this request and we're asking the God of heaven, visit men and women. Are you praying now? Pray. Shalakata pratakato sapretiash. In the next one minute, I'd like you to pray blast in tongues and say, Lord, this is the last of the prayer request that I'm having to write concerning this issue. Hallelujah. Agree with me with a loud amen in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare over every request gathered from this nation and from the nations of the earth online and here in our local environment Jesus I present to you impossible situations according to men and I ask you turn it around now turn it around now Turn it around now. Let every breakthrough request here be turned into a testimony now. Every case here said by men to be impossible. We, we collide that case with the power of God and we produce testimonies now. Whoever must die for this prayer to be answered dies now. Whoever must live for this prayer to be answered lives now. Whoever must rise for this prayer to be answered rises now. Whoever must go down for this prayer to be answered goes down now. Whoever must hear God for this prayer to be answered, hears God now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, may your people not have to write this again. Agree with me, may your people not have to write this again. Lord, I pray that before miracle service april let every request here be turned into a testimony may the fire and the anointing of the holy ghost that makes all the difference let it rest on this request the same way fire fell from heaven to consume the sacrifice of Elijah may fire fall on this now it has been prayed for you will not write it again it has been prayed for you will not write it again in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift up your hands everyone hallelujah listen we're in a very strange season 
of the manifestation first of the spirit of revelation listen carefully there is a very spectacular outpouring god wants to upgrade the work of his people to access the mysteries of the kingdom not just to know him god wants to equip us with mysteries are we together number two there is a strange outpouring of the supernatural power of god for performance for performance not just that you had god and it never happens not just that you speak and it never happens number three this is personal to us as a family of faith god has declared that is our year of triumph i want you to believe this word oh believe it otherwise you will sit down and you will watch people rise from nothing and then you will keep clapping i'd like you to insist we still have a few minutes for this meeting to be done tonight insist that if you have never stood upon this altar to testify make up your mind and say no god i must stand before your people are you hearing what i'm saying as i speak over your life now among the many things i want to speak right now i want to activate upon your life the grace and the unction for performance many of you may not know what this anointing is listen carefully lift your hands he said who has ever heard that a city was built in one day but as soon as zion travels there is a grace that is coming upon the people of god hear me for performance he said blessed is she that believes for unto her not unto them mm -mm, mm -mm. this is not a corporate thing unto her there shall be there are many things god has said that has not come to pass there is a grace that engenders performance i prophesy to you now in the name of the lord god who called me and sent me may that unction that will make results appear speedily let it come upon you like fire now let it come upon you like fire now receive it now is yours receive it now is yours receive it now is yours performance 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 shake it la bata la prete get a soto ropa shiata grace for performance everything hanging in the realm of the spirit that is already your portion released by god i decree within the next 30 days it appears physically now I prophesy the spirit of the lord is upon me i speak within the next 30 days it manifests in the name of jesus whatever has slowed down your pace in life so that you are not moving at the pace designed by god i put fire upon your feet and i command speed now i put fire upon your feet i command strength speed strength speed strength speed anything that has not yet worked in your life i don't know why but i'm prophesying i'm speaking to it start working now many of you don't understand what i'm doing to you start working now i don't know what projects you are currently on that has refused to produce i force it to bear fruit now i force it to bear fruit now hear me 
the lord spoke to my spirit and told me that the month of april for koinonia you may not believe it but for koinonia and everyone connected to this grace the lord said we will see a strange dimension of wealth and manifestation write this down brothers and sisters is the word of the lord i think i was telling you yesterday that the lord told me this you will see people that know nothing about money rise in a way that they themselves are asking what happened listen except the lord has not sent me i declare you must be part of the testifiers don't say i'm too small receive it don't be foolish in the name of jesus you must be a participant listen i tell you brothers and sisters please write this down you will see a strange rising rising write this down you will say i said it nothing to some i mean mysteriously people will have to ask what is happening it is a grace there is a grace that makes it happen i'm not talking of business i'm talking about the suffering word of god upon the life of a man may it be your portion in the name of jesus i decree upon you the kind of favor that will make even your enemies to say there is god in your life i release that dimension of favor now listen you can't rise in this kingdom without the favor of god you will struggle for nothing please hear me i prophesy it again whoever is lacking favor on his life i decree from this night carry favor inside outside everywhere online carry favor let me prophesy over finances whatever makes money run away from you don't say i'm talking about money you need it for what is coming in ahead whatever makes finances run from you whatever dug a hole in your life that makes you suffer in misery and penury i turn it around now i turn it around now I pray for every student here the kind of results you have never seen I release it to you now I release it by the Spirit I release it from the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ anyone due for promotion here or anyone's family member rightfully due for promotion and either because of religious sentiments or because of ethno tribal sentiments they have trampled upon you i decree and declare may the angel of god responsible for lifting visit your destiny and ensure that your promotion must manifest I pray for your loved ones. I pray for you. Whoever is called jobless here, yeah, before next miracle service, get something doing now. I prophesy it again. Whoever is called jobless before next miracle service, I don't know how it will happen, but get a good job. There are people here trusting God for direction. Very clear direction for the next level of their lives. Could be maritally, could be geographic location, whatever it is. Hear God in this season like never before. 
hear God in this season like never before. Lift your hands. I release upon you the grace for supernatural miracles. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Sapoto so brigadier. Receive it right now. From tonight I declare whoever you speak over and command their destinies to open may my God honor it. I said may my God honor it. Whoever fights you goes down immediately. Whoever fights you goes down immediately. Hear me? Whoever mocks your passion for God goes down immediately. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise, may his prayer be answered. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise in Koinonia tonight, may their prayers be answered. Every embargo of bad luck upon your face that makes your helpers look at you and turn aside, I tear that veil completely in the name of Jesus. favor like never before testimonies like never before koinonia is the place of the anointing koinonia is the place of unction i pray for you a new a fresh grace and anointing let it rest upon you like the dew of heaven begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit I'm praying it again. Begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the Spirit. Begin to flow effortlessly in the gifts of the Spirit. The mantle of honor that God has put upon my life, God has put upon this ministry. You are part of this vision, you are under this grace. There's no reason why it should not work in your life. I command it to start speaking now. No more dishonor in your life. No more dishonor in your life. Hear me. For those who have been trying certain things for a long time, whether it's exams, whether it's admission, whatever you have been doing again business i don't care i don't know where the embargo came from but i break it right now from today any man that looks upon you may god cause them to bless you whatever has killed your prayer life this night I release upon you the spirit of prayer and supplication listen see let me tell you something don't ever let people there are people who are under such passion for new things the system of the kingdom is dynamic but the foundations of the things that make men grow are the same prayer the word corporate fellowship obedience if you leave any of these things and you say you are looking for power or looking for anointing is a joke you will never find it one more time i restore your prayer life in the name of jesus christ i don't know what killed your passion for the word your passion for bible study your passion for devotion your passion for the things of god but i command the restoration this night i don't know what took away your passion for the house of god but in the name of jesus may a love for the house of god like never before come upon you in the name of jesus the grace god released to bring the word triumph 
come to pass in this ministry may that grace speak over you i speak over your life it is your year of triumph therefore whatever has mocked god in your life i command that in as you enter april from tomorrow you triumph over it hallelujah as you enter april it will not be april full it will be april wise it will be april breakthrough it will be april miracles it will be april speed agree with me again i'm praying with you between now and miracle service april please hear me results together with tears in your eyes for joy you will return with them results together with tears of joy in your eyes wave your hands and give jesus all the praise wave your hands and give jesus praise thank you lord dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus I'll see you again bye